Last episode, we built our first rocket and made it to the moon. And speaking of the moon, I actually found out you can have water on it. You just need to oxygenate the area. So all that took was returning to Earth again to fill up a temporary tank and some buckets, and then getting frustrated that EMI was too big on my screen, so I disabled it, not realizing it would take away the button to re-enable it. So, you know, I had to leave the world, I re-enable EMI, it was still too big, so I changed my graphic settings. I hate changing my GUI settings. Back to the moon of course, and then we go in there and, and uh, put the water down. All that to say I can breathe on the moon now without a spacesuit. Oh, and also it turns out I didn't have to do any of that because you can just waterlog a block and it works, but don't tell anyone because that's cheating, okay? But now we're back in home sweet home because we have a new project to work on. Tom Simple Storage kind of ate my rocket ship last time, and it's still not here even after all that. I even downloaded EMI just to make sure it wasn't like an item bug or something. Nope, it's gone, and in order to protect this fresh new shiny rocket, I say we upgrade. QIO is mechanism storage solution, and it's quite a bit better than Tom's. For one, it relies on drives, not physical storage. And it's completely wireless without the use of this ugly beacon. And since it has redstone adapters, exporters, and importers, we can actually easily import our stuff from the moon. And I know Tom's can also do wireless import and export, but it's confusing, and I don't understand it, so I hate it. Just an eensy little issue. These are polonium pellets. That requires a nuclear reactor. But would you look at that? Nuclear reactors are the chapter we're on in the quest book. It's almost like I planned this. But in all seriousness, reactors are very fun to play with, though there is quite a bit ahead of us. Now, kindly, the quest book does give us a lot of information we need, as well as like great material lists in the quest book too, which I love. Even better, the developers of this pack actually were kind enough to give us instantaneously loadable like turbine and reactor schematics. This is wildly convenient because they're not particularly interesting to build if you already know how to build them. That being said, it is fissile fuel that puts people on edge. You see, we need uranium hexafluoride, and uranium hexafluoride comes from hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. Now, uranium oxide is pretty simple to get, you just need some yellow cake uranium, which is of course uranium Everybody knows that. I have no idea what that guy's talking about, but you don't have to worry about it. Fissile fuel definitely looks scary when you break it down like this. But to be completely honest, it's just a step-by-step -step process. All we need is a little space, and I know exactly where to go. Think about it. What's better than a cute little homestead on the side of a river? Than a cute little homestead housing an illegal nuclear power plant in its basement? I'm in my mad scientist era, and I feel like this is going to serve as a perfect suspicious little elevator right into the depths. There is a good mechanical reason to be so far away from my base. These reactors tend to get a little bit splody if you make them unhappy, and that causes a lot of radiation poisoning which is generally bad for the human body. We are gonna need a pretty considerable amount of space, so let's get digging. Where's my drill? Where's my dr- My drill? Drill? No, 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 you can't take this from me. No, no, it ain't my drill! It ain't my drill! No! Curse you, Tom Simple Storage! Anyways, oh, you can't enchant it in this thing? There we go. I'm not doing villagers again. But don't tell anyone, because that's cheating, okay? And I am very tired of my items being destroyed by Toms. I suppose this could be called taking the nuclear solution. His machines definitely don't take up a small amount of space, so I'm hoping this is big enough? I think any self-respecting mad scientist would start with the elevator, right? Surely, surely they would. I think I got the pull length correct here? Uh, did I actually? Nope, one too many. And everybody knows that evil villain elevators are tastefully slow, so I think just a regular water wheel will cut it. Uh, is that tastefully slow or painfully? That might be painfully. Okay, should have just sped it up, and we can test on the frequency of reactor casing, because obviously. Lick. Uh, yeah. That's tastefully slow, I think. To make sure that no one else has access to it, we need buttons so that we can make this linked controller. And with that, I should be able to encode this and then... Well, I didn't program it right. Need a powered latch. I do love Create Redstone. So now when I press this, the latch will flick. There we go. Okay. Yes. Gaze upon my taste for slowness. The link controller is great too because it's like one of those car keys that opens your car before you're actually in it because if I know I'm coming into the evil lair, I could just start dropping the floor already if I need to be moving quickly. And now with a slight speed up and some beautifaction, this elevator is looking pretty good. Perfect for escapes. Now for this empty mess. Because the reactors are so finicky, I say we build them first and then decorate, which is definitely going to take a lot of crafting. Steel, 
steel and osmium for turbine casings, lead and steel casings for reactor casings, and we need steel and copper for thermal evaporation casings. So in case you couldn't tell, this is gonna take a while. Uh-oh. I thought we had more lead than that. Well, hopefully this 18 more ingots will be enough. Wishful thinking, wishful thinking. Oh, that's an annoying recipe. We need three of these. These control rod assemblies are the reason we actually needed this dash. And for this size of reactor, it looks like we're gonna need five of them. So we're pushing into that dash supply and we're definitely gonna run out of lead. Well, I suppose now's as good a time of any for another mining trip. Now that is a decent amount of lead. And I found an enchanted golden apple. Tuck that away for later. Now this reactor on its own doesn't actually produce power. You need this wind turbine component. We only really want polonium pellets, so we don't strictly need the power, but it would be nice. So more crafting for me. I want this structural glass, but the recipe conflicts with Dave's building extended. Well, since a glassless turbine would suck, I'm just gonna actually craft the Dave's glass and then just replace it with the structural glass with cheats. But don't tell anyone, because that's cheating, okay? Okay, that should be it. Actually, no, hold on, I need these big old solar panels. These guys cost just a ton crafting trees. And you know what, last thing, we're gonna need is just a ridiculous amount of aqueous accumulators. More aqueous accumulators than you think. Is a stack of aqueous accumulators too much? Maybe, or maybe, it's not even enough. But we are gonna need a huge amount of these component parts too. And now we have them. <laughs> now this first structure we're gonna do actually needs daylight access because of how we're setting it up. But as everybody knows, all good evil layers have a tail on the surface. So this will be that. This one is going to be our thermal evaporation plant. And I'll explain why we need it in just a minute. It is a delightfully simple system to set up though, so no real issues here. And this should give us some red particles, yep, to indicate it's formed. Now this guy runs off of heat instead of power, and that's actually what we're gonna be using these solar generators for. And now we take our first aqueous accumulator, set this little guy up, we're gonna give him a component, so in goes water, and out comes brine. You can't see that it says brine, but it says brine. And a trick we can do to make this look a little bit nicer is just replace these guys with a little bit of grass flame slabs, and this will still function. Now we gotta dig a channel for the brine to come down to our secret evil lair. Is that is that centered? No, it isn't. Now it is. Now we can grab our brine and have a little bit of brine action in the depths. I think we'll dedicate this side of the facility to fissile fuel production and this side of the facility to the actual structures. I think I'm gonna build them inserted like one into the wall just for style points. Alrighty, either we get red particles when I finish this wall and I'm smart or I don't get red particles and I'm dumb. Red particles! I crafted a turbine! I'm sure trying to build a reactor from memory won't go wrong at all. Get the control rod assemblies all thrown in there. Actually, I probably shouldn't throw these. And this should be a reactor from memory. Boop. Hooray! Very nice. Two reactors. Well, no, one reactor and a turbine. Uh, I think I am gonna include their top face, though. They look a little bit dopey. Now, they're not actually complete, because I don't have their valves, their inputs, outputs, and then the fission logic adapters on this guy, which will actually shut it on or off if it explodes. But that's gonna come once we know where the fuel source is coming in. So about that. We need to start by being able to turn gunpowder into sulfur. Pretty simply, we just need to take an electrolyte separator. We get sodium and chlorine. For this next part of the video, I'm gonna try to refrain from using the actual words to describe these machines. Whoa. What just happened? Anyways, the actual name's really confusing. I'm just gonna try to call them what they do. So this isn't an electrolytic separator. No, no, no. It's Sir Splitter the Second. Because all it does is take one thing and split it into two things. So in this case, it's brine into sodium and chlorine. We don't need the sodium for this particular setup. Now, when a mommy chlorine and a daddy hydrogen love each other very much, they create hydrogen chloride. And for that, we need a glorified mixer. It mixes things. Now, Sir Splittington the Second actually makes another appearance because delicious hydrogen is trapped inside of evil water. So Sir Splittington is going to take water, and with a little bit of power, we'll cleave it into hydrogen and oxygen. And now we have hydrogen chloride. And finally, we take a chemical injection chamber, or pretty much just a furnace if you look at it, and we can now take gunpowder and convert it into del- uh, whoops power at first, and now we can convert gunpowder into delicious sulfur. Something we should add to it though are these gas upgrades which will make it use the hydrogen chloride much more efficiently. But how do we get gunpowder? Well that's a fantastic question audience that definitely asked that question. Take a crusher, put some flint in it, and it's as easy as that. For good measure, we can even use a bin. INFINITE SULFUR! You guys still with me? You still, you still here? Do I have to put like subway surfers on the video? Okay good, 
because we're not even close. We need to get our hands on delicious, delicious sulfuric acid, which is gonna require a bit of a crafting tree that starts with sulfur. And we gotta make that sulfur rusty by oxidizing it. And after we make our sulfur a little bit rusty, we get ourselves sulfur dioxide. Which if you don't know, just means it's sulfur and two oxygen. But we don't need sulfur dioxide, we need three sulfurs! And that can be easily made with the glorified mixer again. All we have to do is get the oxygen from this guy and stuff it into this guy. And with a little bit more power and love, we get sulfur trioxide! We're just too two sweet steps away from delicious sulfuric acid. First of which is another aqueous accumulator. Power them up! And now we just need to simulate rain. You guys remember that old, like, graph they would tell you about the condensation cycle? Well, this is the condensator. But we can reverse it. And reversing it means that it will turn water into water vapor. And what do you get when you take sulfur trioxide and water vapor and put it in a glorified mixer? <laughs> sulfuric acid! Let's go! See, that's not so bad. So now that we have sulfuric acid, we're that much closer to uranium hexafluoride. Now that sulfuric acid is going to be used in making hydrofluoric acid, which is made in a machine that is just way too expensive for what it does. It's effectively just an acid bath. All right, now we can make our insanely expensive bathtub, feed it some delicious sulfuric acid, and then give it a manual input of fluorite blocks. Fluorite can't be automated, but this produces a ton. And that is hydrofluoric acid. One half of uranium hexafluoride. And I just realized I built that next to my elevator when I probably should have built it over there. But I really don't want to move all this. This other half of uranium hexafluoride is actually really easy. We just need to make a rusty uranium, which just requires an enrichment chamber too. Again, glorified furnace. And uranium is definitely something we're actually going to want a lot of because this guy goes through a ton of it. So now we're getting yellow delicious cake uranium. Obviously edible because it's cake. Nom 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 nom. Don't tell me what to do. And the cake uranium goes to get rusty cake uranium and there's uranium oxide and at the end of it all we need the big spinny boy behold he is big he is spinny oh wait hold on i missed a step i missed a step first we need the glorified mixer yes and because it's kissing both the hydrofluoric acid and the uranium oxide it gets both and there's uranium hexafluoride which we then happily insert into the isotropic centrifuge or the big spinny oh you can hear him big spinning Fissile fuel, baby! Fissile fuel is what powers this guy. He hungy. He hungy for uranium. Uh-oh. That's a bad sign. I think our power supply just crashed. Well, never a better time to make energy upgrades. Which I kind of should have started with. Ooh, ooh, glass. Okay, well, this guy gets some, and it's back to the base. Yeah, I think the one power generator we have running right now. Oh, my carrots. It's probably pretty stressed. Now is also a perfect time to run our uranium through ore processing. Oh, jeez, right. Well, maybe it's not such a good time for that. All right, time to start just slapping these into machines. Shoot, we're out of gold dust. Uh, okay, hold on. Of the machines I have, what do we... Wow, these guys are backed up. Okay, let's do a little, little stint here to get an alternator. Hopefully doubling our effective power gen will give us that edge we need. Surely one will be enough, right? It better be. It's definitely gonna have to fill buffers first. It does not look good. And that is such a huge hit to our stress units. Okay, but with uranium and crushed gold, I should be able to make more energy upgrades. Uh, I, I, I think we're stable? Yeah, yeah, everything looks stable now. Not this guy. Let's get this going. So as I said earlier, he doesn't actually produce power all on his own. It's actually this guy, the turbine, that does. We'll need some pretty high tier pipes for this to work, but we can take a reactor port, change it to output coolant, have a turbine valve, and connect the two. And because we're going to be cooling this guy with water, it'll pump steam into the steam turbine. And the water is why I have 60 aqueous accumulators in my inventory. And before I go too much further let's just make sure we're going to be chunk load safe here and honestly not too bad oh that's unfortunate just a piece of the multi-block steps out of a chunk well we wouldn't want that exploding on us would we and this should be a fine enough space for aqueous accumulators the reactor uses a ton of water to cool itself so we're going to need to produce a ton of water and as far as water farms go, that's pretty good, I think. First is uh, actually installing upgrades into these guys. And now, the process 
of waterification. Do you hear the sound these are making? Oh my god, I turned my volume up just to hear it. I thought that was in real life. I was freaking out. Feelings of horror aside, that's quite a lot of water. Now to pipe it all up. Okay, last few, and there we go. This might look pretty overkill, but if this thing runs out of water, it explodes. And well, uh, this guy's gonna fill up really quickly. Oh my god, look at it go. Whoa! Now we have to input the fuel. And I think we'll do that back here too. And boop, there we go. We've got fissile fuel on the inside of this big boy. And that actually means it's done. Fuel, water, steam output. Why are you blue? Now we need this solar neutron activator in order to make polonium, which is what we want. Problem is we have to get a reprocessed fissile fragment, which requires us to go through this whole lengthy and annoying process of getting a plutonium pellet, which takes a ton of nuclear waste. So I guess we do have to run this. Now luckily that means we can actually generate power from it. This turbine valve is actually going to be our power output. We're going to have it kick right into an energy cube that I'm going to upgrade all the way to 100 million FE of storage. Boop. And then I can even make a flux plug, slap it onto that, and attune it to my network. And now we'll be providing power everywhere. This is always the most nerve-wracking part. Eh. Oh, there's the annoying sound. And there we go. You can see that we are now performing a nuclear reaction. Hey, whoa, it's me, future DJOJO. Yeah, the next, like, 15 minutes of footage wasn't very interesting. Mostly I just had this thing running for a while in order to just craft this one item. This one item here is what I wanted to craft. It needs skylight access, so now it has it. And if you're wondering what this is, well, it's a nuclear waste barrel that you can see is decaying or spent nuclear waste. See, Mechanism likes to add realistic radiation. So if you break an object that has radiation inside of it, congrats, your world is irradiated. But nuclear waste and spent nuclear waste waste can go inside of these guys, well, they'll decay, one millibucket per second. But now that this guy's just about done, we can finally move him, and I can show you how we get our polonium pellets. So this is the output for nuclear waste from our reactor, which we're gonna funnel right into a solar neutron activator. It's then gonna convert that into polonium and push that into here with some water, as well as fluorite dust. Now, the only thing we have to worry about, of course, is these barrels having enough of them, because this guy's just gonna be creating a ton of spent nuclear waste. But I can just line these barrels up six in a row like that, grab some pressurized tubes, and connect them up like this. And hopefully that means we'll have enough of these to kind of manage the amount of waste we'll be intaking. Oh, but there's only one way to find out. Oh, and by the way, the circuit behind me will shut the thing off if it's gonna explode. Right now I've got it turned on to its lowest setting, just so we can make sure we're sitting steady on everything. And we can see that this guy is taking in waste, and then it'll beam it into polonium, which is immediately not playing nice with. Why are you not spitting it out? Does it have to be like this? Aha, it has to come out the front. Of course it has to come out the front, but there we go. Okay, we're moving polonium into this, and once we have enough polonium, we'll get a polonium pellet. Now this guy's only burning at 0.1 fissile fuel per tick, but in my testing, we can go all the way up to 2.8, which will really kick this guy into high gear, but keeps our water supply somewhat steady, and is gonna get this guy just filling up with that good radiation. Yeah, this is a slow process. So I've been running this thing for a while and we have 16 polonium pellets, which should complete for us an entire chapter. Yep, that's chapter five done. But what I'm really interested in is this. This is QIO. It's mechanism storage system and it does take a ton of these pellets. Like this isn't even nearly enough for what we need, but we can get started. There's a lot of weird stuff we have to make, like these teleportation cores are a part of it, and then these personalized, like, chests or something. But it's a decently powerful storage system. My biggest gripe is it doesn't seem to have an external storage function, so we're kind of stuck using the drives only. And every one drive costs a polonium pellet, and every drive above that costs four drives. So the highest drive that we can make right now needs 16 pellets. That's literally all I have but we can make ourselves a QIO drive array. Now, the coolest thing about this guy is that it is just wireless forever. So I can set a private one called DJOJO and just check that off, and there we go. Any other QIO thing that I set to DJOJO is mine. Anywhere, anytime, no beacon beam necessary. I can access our items with the QIO dashboard that I can just literally place anywhere so I can go on this wall, and as long as I set the frequency to DJOJO, I now have access to all the items that will be inside of that. The issue is now we're down to nine pellets and I'd really like to make a time dilating drive. 
So it's back to waiting next to the giant microwave. Also, if you made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you. I know these technical videos could be a little hard to stick around in. I'm still struggling with how to make them interesting. So if you did make it this far, let me know in the comments what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. I want to be able to make these kind of mechanism technical focused videos better than I have in the past. And reactors, oh, they're a bit of a headache, so it's a perfect case study. Well, I waited quite a while to get these, but 24 should round us off nicely. First thing I want to make is the portable deck dashboard because obviously I am I am being killed come on is there nothing sacred boop and boop there we go portable dashboard hooked up very nice and so with our remaining 26 polonium I can make one time dilating drive Ah, and we're completely out of uranium, so we're burned out on fissile fuel. This is quite literally our final reserves of the stuff, so this guy's gonna stop working pretty soon. Ah, but one drive is better than none. Oh my god, I did not notice that. Well, this should be enough ultimate control circuits. Boy, that's expensive. Because we need 16 of these QIOs. I, I made four of them. Oh no, that only makes one of the hyperdenses. Uh... Okay, I went out and grinded out the last control circuits. I mean, they're not that interesting to watch, but now I can make the last 12 of these most likely, probably. Yep, awesome. So we'll get the hyperdenses, and then, oh yeah, time dilating. One million items of storage and 1,000 types of items, and we complete the QIO chapter. But most importantly, I can socket this guy in here, and now we have actual item storage, right? Yep. Now all I've got to do is move all of this into the new storage. That, that's, that's going to take a while. We are going to be visiting three different planets today. That's right. We're doing sequence breaking all the way through chapter six to chapter eight. Because I am tired of the moon, man. No reason to dilly nor dally. So let's just get right into it. We need to make ourselves an orange rocket. And I did a stream where we did a ton of mining for Dash. That's where this big guy comes from. So we're sitting on more than enough to make a rocket. The only material we're missing is the silica stuff for heat shielding. And for that, we're going to need a thermal centrifugal separator, which is actually really cheap. I'm just going to stick this dude in a corner. We just aren't going to be using it that much, I don't think. Oh boy, that can hold a lot of energy. And now it can hold even more. Oh yeah. Pretty simply, we're just going to put sand in here, toss it in, and it will convert it into high-grade sand, I think. Yep, that's what we needed. Also, last episode's noodles are so useful, just have infinite food. Anyways, we've got to consume some sulfuric acid in a chemical disillusionment chamber. Blech. So we have some annoying crafts ahead of us. We need to be using an osmium compressor here, but I have just ran out of space for machines. Might be time to extend that second level. God, I, I hate these. I hate these. Stop it. Work. No, no, no. This is just insulting. Okay, but that gives us a lot more room to work with. And we can start a new line of machines all the way up here. And we're going to power them through the top because I think that looks cool. Well, we need a lot more obsidian than this, I think, but I think it's an okay start. Eh, wishful thinking, I suppose. Well, four refined obsidian is what we need to start, so at least we can get on to making that disillusion chamber. We're also going to need a washer. Oh, great. Well, hopefully we don't need more of these. But of course we do, because we need a chemical crystallizer. Well, I mined up a little bit of obsidian. It better be enough for today. I love how fast the advanced stuff works. It's just so cool to watch all this stuff process at once. And then I moved to this absolute slowpoke. And we have our crystallizer. Ba-bam. Whoa, okay. Oh, that's right. That's that's the last step in ore processing, huh? Well, we're not doing ore processing. Maybe later. We're working with this stuff, which we actually need a ton of. Might have to automate this. In fact, yeah, we're definitely going to. And this should be plenty refined obsidian. Automating the high-grade sand is really not going to be that big of a deal. I mean, it's a sand farm. I'm going to make more of these flux linkage amplifiers in order to really speed up the centrifuging process. What are you doing in my house? We're actually going to be doing a decent amount of work in our nuclear area because we need that sulfuric acid. So into my evil lair I go. And I know I built the secret elevator, but I just don't use it. Oh, wait, you know what? I forgot a source of stress units. Ah, motors make everything so convenient. So pretty simply, it's the high-grade sand into sulfuric acid for dirty slurry. Then we wash that for clean slurry, and then we crystallize it for the silica cluster, which requires a lot of silica stuff. Unfortunately, one of these only makes 25 of these. Not a great ratio. 
Hence the passive thing we're going to be doing. So far, the setup is pretty simple. We're going to have crushing wheels going into this chest with a filtered nullifier beneath it, accepting only flint and clay balls. I really just don't need more of those. Everything else, which is the sand, will go into here. At least that should work that way since this is the closest. The hope. Otherwise, it'll be standard crushing wheel config. And I have some resonant integral components for this guy to make it nice and lickety split. Water and lava. And it's cobblestone building. Now I just got to get IO set up here and probably upgrade this guy. That definitely helps doesn't it? We do need to bring over our sulfuric, just like so. And I wouldn't mind some infinite water, mostly because I need it for this guy. Just like so. Give these guys energy upgrades, and we should be able to hook this power into main. Just like that. Bam! A bit of an oopsie with the crushing wheels. Easily fixable. Awesome. And uh, I think the sand is going right into this thing. Oh, sorry. That's the allow list. My bad. There we go. Boom. Oh, that's fast. Uh-huh. Disillusioning. Yes. Wash, yes. Crystallize. Well, it'll take a while. Oh, but isn't this fantastic? I would not mind some speed upgrades here. While I'm crushing up this Osmium, did you know it's the 10th episode of this series? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So it was a bit of a treat. I think all my members deserve a little bit of a world download, huh? So if you're a supporter on the Discord or the YouTube or my new Patreon, link in the description, you'll get a world download of this video. Well, not just this video, but like all 10 of them. Because it's this world. Nah, you get the point. Anyways, thanks for the support on 10 episodes. It really means a lot. Oh, we're about to get our first silica crystal too that's pretty sick and these speed upgrades are definitely gonna help oh but we get to watch it go through hooray one of six required to make one thermal tile woof go faster go faster go faster that's a bit expensive maybe i should put some speed upgrades in this guy i hope our energy grid can support this uh oh our sulfur trioxide grid can't yikes and that gave us a whole one more okay got it more speed upgrades needed but i'm almost out of osmium Oh, don't send me on a mining trip. One thing I could do here is I don't really need speed upgrades in this thing, to be fair. And maybe not even this thing, honestly. So that should reduce our cost here. This needs to go faster. Uh, did I just see an energy deficit happen? Oh, God. Great, now we're not oxidizing fast enough. Oh, jeez, this is a big deal. And now we don't have enough water vapor. Bah! My machines are falling apart. And now I'm not making sulfur fast enough. Oh, jeez. And if I'm not mistaken, our power grid is suffering. Well, actually... Not that badly. Though I wouldn't complain about running another stack of uranium through this whole thing. Actually, I would, because this thing's annoying. Man, without a large buildup of sulfuric acid, this is just painfully slow. Time to take some more drastic measures. I think I can turn this into a tier 2 version, and then ask it to auto-sort, so it's running three at a time which will push a lot more sulfuric dust through. I think that's helping our throughput. But now our brine's running out. Oh, this was meant to be a simple episode. And we just have run out of brine. Okay, but I know a fix for that. I know a fix for that. We can add a device called a resistive heater. I think the way he works is if I place him on a valve like this and power it, it'll start producing a number of heat based off of the Fe per tick I supply. So if I say I like use a thousand Fe per tick, it'll produce a ton of temperature and it should make this thing heat way up and produce a lot faster. Oh, that was an easy fix. Maybe then we don't have to use like 1000. Ah, uh, not good enough. Oh shoot, and this is now failing. Oh wait, wait, this is filling up now. Okay, okay, I'll take good enough. Did we just, did we just run out of power? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, as long as we have enough buffer to make a bit of fissile fuel. Yes, 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 okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, so it wasn't enough. We just ran out of power. Okay, well, that was a massive kerfuffle. At the end of which I realized I could just put gas upgrades in this machine. Yep, that was pretty silly of me. But we do have silica clusters producing ever so slowly. Maybe I do want to put some speed upgrades in this guy. We'll see what uh, two does because that's the amount that I have. Okay, cool. And that looks like it's already faster than we can input. Yeah, we need six of these per craft. So it's going to take forever to build up. Hence a passive system which I can turn off with a flick of a lever. And we're even backing up some power. Perfect. Looks like this thing is actually too slow now, but whatever. At least our sulfuric acid's holding clear. And our brine, which I've upgraded the production of a lot. Like, a lot. Because we're going to actually be needing more of that later in today's episode. All right, this should be enough for, like, a start on getting that rocket done, because it's going to take a while. So, let's get started. Got ourselves a rocket nose, and we're making the little fins, just like that. We can make our two tanks, like so. Glass, of course, is easy. Seat is a bit annoying because you need 
wool, but you can actually use cobwebs in an enrichment chamber to get infinite string. Bent we already have, and I think that's it for the easy stuff. Might as well get the rocket ship actually built up, or rather the rocket builder. Ah, might as well get this thing out of the way. All right, everything's crafted and loaded up. This better not screw me. Here we go. Yeah, baby. And you know what? While we're waiting for the silica clusters, might as well make a second one. We are gonna need it. Alrighty, round two. Are you kidding me? It failed. I have to craft all that stuff again. What a fun mechanic. Oh. I'm out of shadow steel, what? <laughs> I love making these. I have to go all the way back to the end, which is here. Hopefully I have enough back tank charge to get to the end from here. Just a bit more. That's all I need. Alrighty, more shadow steel to the effort. You know what? I should have made a lot more of that because we need a lot more of that. Ah, dang it. Still, hopefully we can get another guidance mechanism instead of it breaking. There, that's much better. Thank you. I also gotta remember we need a bunch of tier one plating. Four more. No. Five more. Of course, we still need more shadow seal, so time to do a return trip. All right, hopefully this should tie us over for a bit. Please tie us over for a bit. And since we keep running out, I might as well do a little bit of obsidian mining here. All right, that's probably enough obsidian for a while. Let's round out that last few platings. Uh-oh, come on. There we go. Now we need to upgrade them, which does mean we're going to need these thermal tiles, which is enriched carbon and silica clusters. I should have enough for that. Oh, I made diamonds. Well, okay, thank you for that. And one, two, perfect. 13 of these, 13 of these. Now we just need 13 blocks of dash. Let's get our heat resistant or tier two plating. I mean, I guess it is heat resistant, right? Ta-da! That's a big milestone. Last thing is the engine. And this is why we needed those polonium pellets. Boop. Gotta slice it. Finishing touches. Dash engine. Rocket ship. Why is it not? Oh yeah, I haven't powered it. Ahem. Rocket ship. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, baby. Whoa, this is a big boy. We also don't get to complete this quest because I'm not touching rocket fuel. <laughs> my rocket's orange now. Rah, yeah. Oh, it looks so cool. This might be my favorite. I'd also like to be able to come home, so we're going to make a launch pad. Easy peasy. Nope, I made it wrong. There we go. Fuel it up, suit myself up, and we are ready, baby. Time to fly higher than ever before. To Mars! Right, after a countdown. Woo! Alrighty. Solar system, Mars. Land on it, baby! A momentous occasion. Why am I out of it? Oh my god. Frightening me every time. What are all those, like, little suns? What? Whoa! Oh, this is a wild. Why, why is there snow here? Is there snow on Mars in real life? I feel like there wouldn't be. Okay. I'm gonna drop our launch pad here. Actually, maybe I'll keep it on me, but I'm gonna mark this area. Home launch but i will keep it on me just in case we are looking for ore okay there's a special type of ore on this planet and that's all i want but i do want to first check out why there is snow here yeah there's just snow what why is there snow okay weird we need a cave we need it quick what is that okay that doesn't look nice i don't want to play with that okay maybe i want to play with that a little bit what are you ow 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 okay you hurt you hurt you hurt looked like a dodongo from the legend of zelda i mean not really it didn't all right looks like i might have to do some manual digging here uh or never mind uh oh more dodongos ostrom that's what we're looking for perfect i should have brought my mining rig with me that would have been smart well i'm gonna assume the deeper i go the more of it i get okay 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 those things hurt they hurt i get it i understand it dang they they can target you from a while away Whoa, the planet's core. Now, I will say, Ostra makes a lot more than just tier 3 plating, so I do want a decent supply of it. Whoa, there's diamonds on Mars. That's cool. Over 100 raw Ostrom. I, I think I can work with that? Yeah, I think I can stretch that into 300 ingots of Ostrom. Ah, uh, but I still have oxygen tanks, so a little more wouldn't hurt, would it? Well, okay, getting more is hurting a lot because of these guys, but you get the point. Okay, I think I've got enough Ostrom. I'm digging a tunnel out of here. Alrighty, off we go to home. Wonk. And we're out of here, baby. The Martian sky is pretty pretty actually oh there's us in the distance hello earth speaking of earth back to you landing right next to the launch pad beautiful that's probably the last time we're using that rocket because one planet isn't good enough for me i've got my sights on two more but first we're gonna need to process this ostrom and we can do that a lot better in our nuclear facility now oh, we ran out of power 
Oh, oh, again, we ran out of power. What? God, we burned through that so quick. We should have had a ton of power stored up. All right, here's some more uranium for you, buddy. What, one and a half billion FE isn't enough for you? Guess not. Well, anyways, in our disillusionment chamber, we can actually take blocks of raw ostrom and distill them into a way better ratio. I believe earlier we were tripling? This, I think, is quadrupling, if I'm correct. Or quintupling? Well, 21 blocks go in, and 630 crystals come out. Yep, that's quintupling. Five times the ore we put in. Absolutely insane. Now these actually get ran through our previous ore processing setup to turn them into dusts. Boy, this is gonna take a while. Well, that's fine, because with what we have, we can get started. You see, the next planets we're going to is Venus and Mercury. Way too hot for our current spacesuit. We need to upgrade, and nothing handles the heat better than netherite. So we're gonna be getting ourselves a fancy netherite spacesuit. And we get our Mars globe, of course. Love it. Now we need some plates of this stuff and crafters in this orientation. And we actually should be able to upgrade most of our current gear into the spacesuit. And for some reason, we need orange dyed glass for this. Keeping it in theme, I guess. And we can start with the helmet. There we go. Now we need both our netherite back tank and a fresh copper one because we need a new set of oxygen gear. Then I think it's more ostrom, the netherite back tank, and the oxygen gear makes, yep, the new suit. Legs are pretty easy, just for ostrom. And same thing for my tootsies. Now that's an upgrade. Beating the heat, baby. And at this point, you guys know the deal. Shiny, shiny orange boy. And this stores double the oxygen from before. Nice. Plenty more ostrom for the taking. Now, the tier three rocket is a pretty big ask. It needs three engines, which require super compressed helium. And that's kind of a big craft for it. It also needs a bigger rocket builder. Woof. 15 plating is needed for this absolute monster. So I guess we need to make some more bronze. Alrighty, tier one plating. Hey, give me that. Get in there, you feisty boy. Problem is, in addition to needing tier two plating, silica thermal tiles, tier three plating also needs a thermal tile. So we need a huge amount of that stuff. So more waiting around, I guess. And I hope this doesn't run out too soon. Well, here's the plating, but we're pretty much just waiting on more silica for that. So why don't we turn our attention to super compressed helium? This guy needs helium three and liquid tritium. Tritium we'll deal with in a second. It's not that bad. Helium three, however, is an absolute pain. More chemical dissolution chamber and these lunar crystals, which require liquid sulfuric acid and moon sand for a tiny chance at one of these guys. One lunar crystal, makes 10 millibuckets of helium-3. You need 1,000 for a single super compressed helium. So in order to make the three engines we need for this machine, we need like 1,500 moon sand and 15 buckets. Yeah, buckets of sulfuric acid. Oh boy. Well, I don't have those moon sand numbers, so I guess time to grab them. There is a way to farm it, but there's no reason. To the moon, to the moon, to the moon, moon, moon. Oh, flux and magnet on. I guess I should find somewhere not near my home. Oh, I forgot to enchant these with the double jump. Oh, I'm stuck to being floaty. And it's real digging hours. 4,000 moon sand should be more than enough to tie us over for a while, and I've just about burnt through my shovel. I mean, maybe I get it to 5,000, you know, that'll make the numbers nice. Hold on, hold on. There we go, that's nicer. Back home, I am using my last four pieces of osmium, like, th th this is it, in order to make a rotary condensator. We need it to get liquid sulfuric acid. So hopefully we don't need more of that today. Why is there radiation around this house? Why is there- why is there radiation? Oh. Oh. Oh no. What, are you running out of fluorite or radiates the- are you <sighs> I ran out of fluorite so there's radiation now? Oh. Am I dying of radiation poisoning? Is that why my screen looks like this? What happened? Why- <laughs> So, if I had to guess, we filled up on nuclear waste because I ran out of fluorite dust to make into polonium. But now my screen is just like this. Why- why is my screen dark? Can I make this go away? I don't have a potion effect. Maybe if I drink milk, though, it'll make it go away? So if I drink the milk, does my screen go back to normal? No, of course it doesn't. Make a hazmat suit, I guess. Maybe that'll help? Oh, this could be bad. Please let this fix my screen. No. Even the Saving World screen is irradiated. What? I'm just trying to relog. Uh, nope. I just... My screen is just like this. Why did I do that? Why did I think I had my jetpack on? All of my stuff was on that. Okay. I no longer have access to any of my items. Today is going very poorly for me. Okay. Bucket. 
I want my stuff back. So I, I guess it's just irradiated over here, but if I'm wearing this, I'm good? That's stupid. Ah, uh, what a frustrating mechanic. Well, I guess I get to deal with this forever now, but hey, we have a lot of polonium and enough silica, but we're here to set up a rotary condensator. This guy will take in gaseous sulfuric acid and spit out liquid sulfuric acid, which of course will have to go into a basin and a mixer. And for the moon sand, honestly, we're just going to go with the basic bin. Suppose I don't need this thing to run lickety splickety fast, so I think I can just run this rotary condensator at like regular speed like that. Uh, no, that actually is pretty slow. Well, actually, it might not outpace the mixer all things considered. Just a wee bit of gearbox spam, and we can get this 20% chance thing going. Oh, hey, we got a lunar crystal really quickly. Look at that. Oh, nice. We're getting lucky-ish. I'm gonna have this spit out onto a drain of all things. See? Because it moves it over. And honestly, for now, I'm just gonna store this in a chest. It's probably advisable to automate this whole process, but you kinda just don't need to. Nice. So, simple system. It goes in there. This goes here, you know. We're holding still very steady on sulfuric acid as well. No issues there. Love it. Stupid reactor filling up with stupid radiation. Ah, but such is the life of an evil nuclear scientist, isn't it? All in all, though, patience is paying off as we now have that 100 we need. 100 lunar crystals, the magic number. I should be able to just slap that in there and it will build up helium-3 and not push it in here. Perfect. Nice. And if I were to take a fluid tank, we should be able to transport that wherever we want to. Uh, hopefully. Isn't that beautiful? And then I think I can do this? 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 How do I... Oh, wait, I know. You need a gauge dropper! Oh, which has something in it. You go in there. Give. Beautiful. Can I put that in the tank? Eh. I just shift right-clicking voids what's inside of it. <laughs> very funny, very funny mechanism! That's fine, I'll just do that again, I guess. It's not like I wanted to, those resources. Okay, this time we uh, don't void it. I'll just leave that there, and uh, we'll let this run for a while. Now, in order to process it, we need tritium, a pressurized reaction chamber, and of course our helium. Also, it makes nuclear stuff, because why not? Uh, how do I get out of here without my jetpack? I guess I have to actually tune a controller. Ah, oh, cool, nice, okay. A real reason to use the little elevator now. Ah, I guess in the long run, the radiation makes us more immersive, doesn't it? Would this be acid rain? Uh-oh, these guys need osmium. I am quite out of that. Radiation mining trip. I should actually probably just start a new mine. And mine I did. All in all, almost 600 raw uranium, 100 raw osmium. We are so back. Over a stack of raw uranium blocks is crazy. I can't complain about having to use this. This is, this is pretty fun. We're sitting on plenty of silica clusters, so I'm gonna shut this device up here by just telling it that it can't output. Now, I can just use this device for ore processing. All right, I'm gonna process this osmium, and then we're gonna work on tritium while the rest of ore processing goes on. We are so very close to our goal, and so very low on video time. Ah, I'm sure my editor wouldn't mind editing a 30,000 hour long video, right buddy? You guys wanna see a magic trick? Tritium? Dunium! Ta-da! I did it off camera. It's nothing you haven't seen before. We get liquid lithium out of the thermal evaporation plant, turn it into gaseous lithium, solar neutron activated that into gaseous tritium, turn that into liquid tritium, and then we have liquid tritium. We're gonna be getting a lot more tritium and using a lot of it later, but not today. Today, it's janky setup time. I can now take our jankily made tritium, and we can run down to our nuclear processing area. Since this reaction does give off some nuclear waste that needs to be taken care of. Thankfully, that wouldn't be too hard because of this guy. I believe we can fill it up. Oh, wait a minute. This doesn't need water. Well, I had a spare gauge dropper. Goodbye. This needs the helium. And then I could put my tritium there and pull it into the device. Yes. And then all I need to do is give it a single fluorite dust and we're good. It doesn't have any power. Okay, let's give this guy some power. And there we go. And for all that is good in the world, we finally have one piece of super compressed helium. Two more to go, and our transplanetary vacation begins. And here we go. I was able to make eight super compressed helium with all of the moon sand that we have. We are out. We are donezo with the moon sand. But this should hold us over for a little while. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the radiation went away, I think. Did it really? Oh, yep, no clickies. Okay, nice. I didn't realize that was temporary. All that's left to do is to make the spaceship, and you've already seen me do that in this episode. So, engines are the finishing touches, and that's everything. They said it couldn't be done, but two rockets in a single episode. Let's see it. 
I built it wrong. Oh, you need structural glass. Okay. Ahem. They said it couldn't be done, but it could be because I'm DJ of the Awesome and I've got the rocket. Look at this. It's so big. Wham. Huh? What? Congratulations, you're the 500th contestant to build the Tier 3 rocket. Let's take a look at your prize. Take a trip through the stars. Valued at $500 million, an all-expenses-paid trip to the Venetian surface. This quaint little hellscape has rolling yellow dunes and pockets of lava for your entertainment. Mingle with the locals, but remember, what's theirs is most definitely not yours. Enjoy expansive subterranean caverns full of valuable gold, diamonds, and calorite. Get to mining, folks, and make sure to bring an umbrella, a titanium one, because watch out for that acid rain on your way out. Venus not hot enough for you? Well, let's take fun in the sun to a whole nother level. Your vacation includes a complimentary trip to Mercury. Gaze upon the full magnitude of the sun, molten slime, and lava. And do I see gotcha game mechanics? One in every 10,000 Mercury cobblestone will contain Stellarite, a rare and valuable material. And uh, that's it. That's all you can do on Mercury. We at Awesome Tech recommend that you leave. Well, that was a relaxing vacation. In all seriousness, that was an important trip to make. Calorite's a big deal, as it's the last ingredient we need to reach Carl. Well, not the last, but it's what the plating is made out of. And we can make something called the Jet Suit. It's a little bit pricey, but honestly not that bad. And I want it. It's an immediate upgrade to our netherite spacesuit. And it pretty much just costs calorite. And these calorite tanks and an elite control circuit. Really should be an easy craft. This is the helmet. The chest piece is the pricey one. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of oxygen and power. Pants are easy peasy. And the Tootsie protectors. Now that, that is an upgrade. So as normal, we can fill this with oxygen. But we can also put some power in it. And boy, does it hold a lot. I believe that number is... Is one million. One million FE coming right up. And if I'm not wrong, donning the suit gives us flight. Yep. A, a weird kind of janky flight. What? Is there a hover mode to this? I can't move while I'm going up. Ow! You take fall damage? This flight sucks! Well, I guess it's better than zero G, right? What I'm really here for is to try the gotcha mechanics. Aw, oh, man. I need antimatter. My friend Carl is trapped in deep space. In order to create the highest tier rocket and traverse the stars, we need this little pellet. And it is expensive. And we're gonna need a ton of power to synthesize this. Thankfully, we have an option. The fusion reactor. This humming behemoth produces nothing compared to it. At best, the reactor behind me can make like 200 100,000 FE per tick, but antimatter needs 400 million FE per tick. And that's just to produce one millibucket per tick. So 200,000 won't cut it. Thankfully, fusion reactors have us covered. Problem is to think about antimatter, we need a supercritical phase shifter. And that needs super compressed helium. Remember that from last episode, how long it took? Yeah, we need a stack. One stack. So... We better get on that. First thing we should really do is automate the moon sand, which we can do with something called a ground sifter. It is not cheap. We're gonna be using a lot of these ultimate circuits. So I think it's about time that we bulk craft them. Goodbye, resources. Ah, but who needs them when you have 20 of these? Uh, never mind. I need them. I, I needed those resources. At least I have a lot of diamonds, right? We're also gonna need a lot of this obsidian stuff, so might as well get that out of the way. Stonks, baby. More stonks. And now we can make the very expensive ground sifter. And for this next bit, we need to be on the moon. And here we are. Now, thankfully, we kind of already have the infrastructure we need for this setup in here. And no, I'm not gonna build the double door air lock, I don't need to. All we need is one piece of moon sand. I'll put that here. Ground sifter goes there. We need to run water pipes right up into it. This is ugly, so it has to go. There we are. And extending this over here, this should start producing moon sand. Yeah, I'm an engineer. Now I'm gonna use a QIO importer. Slap it onto here. Make sure it's only taking in moon sand. Not that this can produce anything else, but you gotta be safe. And then we're gonna set it to my network. We should now see the moon sand value going up. Perfect. And uh, that that's it. That's it for the moon. I come here way too much. Now on the herb side of things, we gotta go back down to our nuclear area. I could just slap this exporter here and have it export into this, but this is kind of an ugly place to have it. Also, this is a chest, not a disillusionment chamber. Yeah, we should probably move this. So this is actually the same setup as we had before, just infinitely 
slightly more elegant mixer, and then an actual dedicated disillusionment chamber, and then of course the converter. Now this exporter, pretty easily I'll put back here, and this is going to take moon sand out of our system and put it in. Issue is we don't have any sulfuric acid here, and it would be a pain to route everything from here all the way through here. Good thing we unlocked a fix for that. A quantum entangle porter is what we're looking for, which we first need a tesseract for. These are definitely not the cheapest of things, and I think we need two of them, uh, but they are going to be very worth it. These fellas can transport anything anywhere. They work like QIO. They've got systems, and they connect to each other. They're pretty cool. For this fella, I want it to have an input of fluid on its side. In fact, it should just input all sides fluid. And I want it to be able to move gases as well. Yep, that's filling up all right. Oh, that's gonna stress our system. Okay, real quick, let's upgrade our power cables here. They kind of really need it. These blue fellas can transmit a lot more power a lot more faster. There we go, that's better. Kind of wish this thing didn't have such a massive internal buffer, though. That kind of sucks. Well, in any case, the big benefit is, of course, we can teleport stuff with it. So we can set this to the sulfuric duo, and now, of course, we can see all the stuff inside of it. And for fluids, I would like it to output on the back and eject. Yes! There we go. Uh, nuts. I was hoping this thing could pull from the basin. It cannot. Okay. We'll deal with that in a bit. We can hopefully take this and ask it to spit out gases. Yes, and that fills up. Oh, that's perfect. And okay, so that's automated. This is an issue, though. This is this is a problem. This might be cheesy, but it might also be possible. Uh, oh my god, that worked. That I just watched that work with my own eyes. Well, is it good? No. Does it work? Yes. That is Helium-3 completely automated, at least up to a stack, and that's what we need. With that out of the way, it's time to start thinking about the reactor. These casings aren't super cheap. Pretty sure we're gonna run out of steel casing. Yeah, okay. But actually, the polonium pellets... We have like 200 of those. We don't gotta worry. Maybe it won't be so bad. There we go. So I believe we need 44 for the frame and a bunch more for the... What did I just run out of? Ah, the expensive one. As I was saying, I think it's like 60 we need for this comfortably because we need four ports and of course this guy. Him not cheap. Nevertheless, he's ours. We also need just a tad more reactor glass and then simple stuff like a laser because this thing isn't just powered by fuel. You have to jumpstart it with a laser beam. When speaking of that, we need this thing, the focus matrix. Now, the issue is we actually need some place to put this thing. Would it be stupid to have this hanging from the ceiling like it's a chandelier? We are about to find out. Uh, yeah, that might look a little dumb because of the catwalks. <laughs> But it, it is pretty it is pretty funny up here. Yeah, but no. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna move this somewhere else. I actually have an idea for this being an extension to this. Maybe like the bioethanol producers. Hey, why is that at 62%? Oh, I took the nubbins away. Anyways, assuming they've expanded into the power gen. So they could have a big old ball. Who wouldn't want that? That's a pretty good height, I think. There is a good reason for this build to be exposed. This thing looks really cool when it's working. I do like the scale of that structure. I think that does look pretty good. And that, we can integrate that pretty damn well. All right, I do think we've got it. I do think we've got it. Pretty sure if I put this here, we'll get particles. Yep. Boy, oh boy, look at this guy. Now, I don't mind putting this here because it's actually safe. It don't explode. It's a pain if it runs out of fuel, so don't let it do that, but it don't explode. I do like the imagery of big ball that makes power. Feels like Helios 1. We're gonna actually have a structure underneath of these supports too, so it's not just gonna be this empty air, but that's for later. For now, I gotta get some ports dug into this thing. Now, one of the reasons I'm building this kind of early is to get the laser charged up. Well, that glass is lost forever. Turns out it's not that easy to jumpstart this thing. We need to let this laser apparatus build up to 400 million FE. That is a lot. So I wanted to start that process now. Now, as you can see, letting this laser just run isn't doing anything. It's just beaming it uselessly. But I set it up so if I flick this lever, this guy is going to sit and wait and build up ever so slowly. Also, this is generating power? What? Why are you making power? Yeah, that's kind of cool. I guess. Passive power generation is fun and all, but it's definitely not gonna cut it. Let's get some fuel. This fella lives off of tritium and deuterium. Now, tritium something we already make way over there, but it's not a large amount, and I kind of want to generate it on site. Deuterium is actually really easy to make. You just take heavy water, which is water gotten from a mechanical pump that has, like, a special upgrade in it, I guess, and it just turns into deuterium, which does mean we're gonna need a pretty big water farm. Since I'm doing this all on site, we're gonna need a ton of thermal evaporation 
activation stuff. We will need two of these up, that's unfortunate. Which does mean we need plenty of valves, and I believe I'm out of circuits. Oh boy. Thankfully, however, I future proof with these HDPE sheets. Running out of circuits is now a non issue. Watch. Oops. Watch. There we go. Alrighty, finishing up a little water farm. And once we get these pipes connected, we have ourselves a pretty rootin' tootin' tritium synthesizer. At least I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yep, this fella should have tons of brine. You need to pull out into this fella who should get tons of lithium. You pull from here, and you know the deal. We turn it into gaseous lithium, and we turn that into tritium. I'm also gonna upgrade this guy. Like that. There we go. We can now take our tritium and hook it right on into our device. Looking sick. Oh, and you know what? I forgot something. It takes 10 times as much brine to make lithium, so this thing needs to be a bit bigger. No bottlenecks, please. Well, okay, now water's a bottleneck. Hopefully that should do it. We shall see. Ah, that's looking better. Uh, hello, Mr. Creeper and Spider. What are you doing up here? With tritium mostly squared away, we're probably gonna have to make some upgrades. We can get started on deuterium. We're gonna need to make ourselves an electrical pump and something called the filter upgrade, which we need tin dust for. That will not be an issue. Yoink. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we can do this underground for cleanliness. I think we need an infinite source, but maybe not. We do need an electric pump. Face that way, please. Thank you. Power them up. Oh, wait. Ah, right, I don't want him to have water. That was goofy. Well, dang, now it's full of water. We can gauge dropper the water out. We want to install the filter upgrade, as well as some speed and then energy. And now when I gauge dropper this out, right, it starts to fill with heavy water. Of course, it runs out of power. Uh, not bad. Well, actually, that is kind of bad. It's kind of slow. Since heavy water is so heavy, that guy only takes 10 millibuckets a tick. In a perfect world, we'd be running this thing at like 256. But maybe that's a little much for us right now. So I think an expansion is in order. Keeping in mind power restraints, I think we're going to start with 10 of these guys. That's just a nice number. Of course, we do have to upgrade all 10 of these to make them, you know, functional. But uh, we'll get there. No one said fusion reactors were cheap. Oh, and don't worry, I made sure to put all the water down uh, before putting in the filter upgrades. It's because I'm a professional. A delightful process. But the grind doesn't stop there, as we need nine stacks of speed upgrades and nine stacks of energy upgrades. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aw, oh, eight, nine. Okay, let's not run out for energy upgrades. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah! Counting with the JoJo. This should be a legendary setup, and it is quite easy extensible if needed. Now to hook it all together and send its contents into the most energy hungry block in the game. Fun fact, electrolytic separators take energy upgrades but don't benefit from them. Why? Well, it's so that their internal buffer gets bigger, but it's stupid. And also, I don't know, balancing reasons or whatever. But that does remind me these do need to be higher tier cables. Sadly, the tier twos just won't work. There we go, we're making deuterium. That's not a bad speed, but it, it just isn't fast enough. Yeesh. All right, let's put some speeds in this fella. Wham! And this thing can dump, I don't care about the oxygen. But now, we can take our deuterium and send it way on up into the reactor. Boop! Look at that power consumption. In fact, I do think we need energy upgrades, otherwise we're bottle capped by its internal capacity. So with both tritium and deuterium, it kind of seems like we're ready. Of course we're not. Why would we be? For one, we don't have 400 million power in our laser beam. And for two, this thing's gonna produce enormous quantities of power that we have nowhere to put. Which is why I've marked out this area. These induction thingy-majiggies are really powerful. These are cells. The basic one stores 3.2 billion Fe. Upgrading it can get us all the way to trillions of Fe, uh, though that is a, a quite expensive. That doesn't mean we're not gonna do it, though. You also need providers, which determine the input and output rate of this thing. So anywhere from 100,000 to 900,000 to 6 million to 52 million. And since this is a multi-block structure, the more you add, the more you get. For reference, by the way, the ultimate induction cell costs four elite induction cells, each of which cost an elite energy cube, which is a ton of alloy. They also cost themselves advanced energy cubes. But the induction ones also need advanced induction ones, which also cost energy cubes. That costs a lot of alloy. I need a lot of alloy. 104 is not enough, especially because I started with 500. Yeah, I had 500 at the beginning of this episode. I'm to make more. Looks like we're gonna need to break into our iron supply down here. Ooh, at least we have a lot. I'm also gonna burn off some of our ally right now getting an elite tier installer. That'll make my metallurgic infuser 
enormously powerful. Since that's where we get the alloy we need, this thing's gonna be working double time. Oh, and by the way, the providers require circuits, so they're a lot more expensive. Probably not a bad time to get some more circuits going. You know, all this crafting has me wondering where we're sitting at with our helium production. Oh, cool! Not even close! Looks like this thing might actually be bottlenecking us here. We definitely want to be producing more than this. Let's see what two does. You know what? I'll just put half in. This is using 160 FE per... T ah, that's nothing. What is this using? Oh, that's a lot. All right, no need to overstress the system. We'll go with four. As long as this recipe moves faster than a mixer can, we're fine. Oh, honey, the circuits are ready. Although, in all actuality, we should probably make some more. That's more like it. And just a little bit more alloy for fun. So to do this, we're going to need an absolutely obscene amount of energy cubes. But realistically, this first one's the most important. We need a lot of these steel casings and a lot of energy tablets. Oh my god, I'm out of brass. What? kind of create mod player am I? I've been so roped into the throes of mechanism. Well, I'm fixing my mistake. Feeling a lot better about myself now. These energy tablets require a lot of gold, a lot of alloy, a lot of redstone. I mean, you know the deal. And thankfully, they don't stack, because why would we want that? We're probably gonna want to or process our gold here. This is actually gonna turn into an enormous amount of it. Oh my god. Pretty much just gonna keep crafting these until I run out of resources. Because every tier requires two of them. Why? Oh, well, actually just about ran out of gold. Okay. 53 energy tablets is really not a lot, but it's what we got. I can start making some of these basic cubes to work with. Why don't we start with storage? Oh, yes. Lithium dust. What, you thought after all that grinding we were ready? <laughs> no. We need to grab ourselves another chemical crystallizer. Because the only way this train is leaving its station is with lithium dust. Thankfully, that's not a massive burden with what we have. And this will be a temporary thing, but we can attach the crystallizer right onto the condensentrator, because we need the gaseous version. And obviously, we're going to give this guy some juice. And ever so slowly, it'll convert into lithium dust. I'd like it to go faster than ever so slowly, so we're going to speed this up just a little bit. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more than that. Temporary as this is, I'm just going to have this thing eject items right into this chest, and we can get started. Let's just see how far we can go. At least these stick. Oh, that was it, because of the energy tablets. Is this what insanity is? Got plenty of gold running through ore processing, so we should be back on track there. But redstone, I'm nervous about. I don't think we're going to have enough, which means we have a bit of an odd choice to make. How do we want to farm it? There's the copper dust cinder flower nether wart recipe, which is pretty good. Or there's the potion of strength into cinder flower recipe, which is also pretty good. We're going to go with the strength potion recipe. It's way more efficient, and I love potions with Create Mod. Also, generating that blaze powder is going to be really cool. And I'm thinking we put it in the windmill to finally give this guy a use. This poor guy has sat here empty for ages now. Well, it's time to change that. That is a lot of clay and flint. This reminds me of the old Spleef era. God, I love Spleef. Honestly, I have no idea why I didn't clean this weed farm out sooner. It is not hooked up to anything. We don't need this farm to be so big anymore, so I'm just gonna bring everything down to this bottom layer here. Or, you know what, actually, it'd be funnier to leave it all up here. I suppose I should add for context that we're doing this because we need nether wart. You know, for potion making. We shouldn't need a whole lot of this stuff since it makes an entire bucket. Actually, does it make a bucket? Yep, that's, that's a lot. So one layer is gonna to be more than enough. Hey, you're not redstone. Wrong powder, dude. It didn't even drop any. In order to get this stuff down, we're gonna need a long, long line of shoots, which we somehow need to angle into a basin. I think I have a cool idea for that. I put a mechanical arm here. No, looks like we need a temporary block there, mechanical arm there, and then I take angled shoots. Hmm. I feel like it would be cool to have a mechanical arm upside down off of that. Problem is, you can't place mechanical arms on targets. What if I use a piston? Oh, cool! And that does look really neat, actually. Oh, another wart. But now what we could do is have a depot right here, and then the mechanical arm will take care of the controls, and it just looks like this really sick line. Although, we should probably make it look a little bit more connected, which I think we can do really cool with the girders. Yep, that actually looks really sick, I think. Now all we have to do is set up our mixers. We obviously want smart pipes here. This guy is going to be our awkward potion mixer, and this fella's going to be our strength potion. And actually, I think both of these guys should be one off the ground. Oh, we don't have any blaze burners! No! Looks like we need to hire some more employees. I love this feature. Oh, oh no! <laughs> what are you doing up there, buddy? <laughs> He's got his own... Oh! Tell no one. All right, employees, get to work. 
Also, the best part of this setup is that, I mean, just, just look at that. Just look at that. One cog here powers all of this goodness. No idea how we're going to deal with the pumps, though. We're going to use quantum entangler porters to transport the fluid I'm going to power these guys with. Actually, speaking of, they need their hats. So I'm going to set a biofuel network. Also, I have to replace this guy. He's kind of non-configured. Make sure he still has his inputs and outputs. No, it clears the inputs and outputs. Oh, really? Okay, hold on. Oh, shoot. That's a lot of... That's a lot of another wart on the ground. Wow. Okay, well, what if, what if, what if we place this fella first, and then it's the shoot that we add in. What about that? That does not bridge. Oh, oh, I bridged it. Oh, pixel perfect. Okay, cool. So this guy has his input and output. This thing functions again. Beautiful. Take your dang warts back. Might as well get this quantum entangler porter hooked in. Now we can just do this, because this has all our uh, fuel in it. Eject fluids. Left and right. Oh, yeah, baby. I actually just realized this mechanical arm is also probably going to manage blaze powder, which we should probably talk about. Normally in the create mod, you'd need to commandeer a spawner. But in this pack, in a separator, a magma cream turns into a slime ball and a blaze powder. In heated mixing, you can turn a slime ball into a magma cream. I think you guys see where I'm going with this. Now, that's a cool looking machine. It's actually pretty simple. Slime balls go into the basin, get turned into magma cream, output it here, sucked into the separator, blaze powder comes out here, slime balls come out here, cycle repeats. I even have this guy fueled with create pumps to get this copper casing to make it look better. I do have to go through the process of replacing this guy, though. We do have to filter these now, but I think I can do it like this, which looks cool. And this guy's fully upgraded now. Ta-da! Just a few last touches needed. And here they are. I was gonna do a proper netherrack farm, but we have so much netherrack stored. This fluid encapsulator is the way we actually get our redstone dust, which I swore was a spout recipe, but I guess not in this pack. And then underneath of everything, we power these wheels, and we have a pipe moving the liquid in. Last touch is really are to get this guy some components. Boop. And, uh power everything and filter filter everything too all righty this will power the machines okay right i had it set too fast oh wait this guy's just facing in the wrong direction yes now mix yes now pump yes okay cool so that's already working this guy's powered oh it's so nice looking already now this fella, we put a magma cream into. Make sure it can output on both sides and input on the bottom. Give this gentleman some power, like so. That is working, actually. Oh my god, are we doing it? Are we? Where's the, where's it going? Uh, this doesn't work. What? Oh no, I thought it would work. It works on belts. That makes me so sad. Aw. Well, the first thing I want to solve is the mystery of... Why no fluid? It's very much close enough. Actually, why is it not taking in fluids? Oh, no. The potion of strength from Create is different than the potion of strength this thing wants? Well, what, what do I do about that? A actually, what do I do about that? Well, I just spent like an hour in CubeJS trying to fix this. All I ended up doing is making this really broken looking recipe, but it works now for some reason and I don't know why. But I did fix it. It started working only after I did that. So, yay? In any case, we have to plug this thing into power. I don't know. I just wasted an hour of my brain space, but yay! That is a lot of redstone, a lot of fast. Uh, this doesn't work, though, and we have to fix that. Easy fix, just annoying. There we go. That's all working happy like. God, I just melted my brain. But hooray, redstone! I honestly think we can just get away with using an importer here. And that's redstone flowing in. Very nice, very nice. Well... Now we just kind of wait. I guess we should probably get this hooked up to the mainland, huh? That is pretty cute, actually. I hate to say it, but I kind of enjoyed building that. Am I getting better at building? <sighs> well, I built this path, which is more predominantly dirt, because I like the idea that this is just so unmaintained. And then I have this little bridge that I mostly copied from a YouTube tutorial link in the description, but I edited it a little bit. Added these redstone lamps, because, you know, redstone farm. And uh, we're all hooked up with a footpath to the mainland. No more swimming to get here. And we've already made 6,000 redstone. That is a lot more than I thought we were going to make. You know, for a brief moment, I'd forgotten I did all that just to craft more of these things again. Life was better. So we need 32 of these basic induction cells for one of the ultimates. At least we have a ridiculous amount of lithium now. Oh, they said it couldn't be done. Okay, so 
this is interesting. Mechanism components have some cool features to them. This is the basic energy cube. But if I'm not mistaken, if I craft a basic tier installer and then upgrade that into an advanced tier installer, I can upgrade this guy by right clicking on it. Notice how neither of these recipes cost those stupid tablets. But I have to right click all the cubes I want to upgrade by hand. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? What did I do to deserve this? Oh, honey, it's 5 p.m. Time to click on your cubes. Ah, 32 wasn't the right number. Chili D. Jojo, I needed a whole stack of them. Oh, nuts, we're out of gold. And we're out of osmium. Uh, looks like it's time for this guy to shine again. Everybody knows the Badlands is where the gold is at. Now, I don't know if the other biomes you'll go Badlands works for this, so I'm gonna head to the vanilla one nearby. Well, nothing left but to go on a big old mining session. Looks like I'll be doing my mining session for one hour, 40 minutes, and 31 seconds. Any guesses in the comments what I'm watching? These two blocks are the most expensive things we own. I am out of resources. But boy, are we gonna have a lot of power storage. Time to build the induction tower. For the multi-block, we just throw the providers and the cells inside of the build. It doesn't really matter. And as you can see, we have plenty of room to grow in case we need it. I really hope we don't. Hopefully we see particles. That's not good. Oh, I just didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Nope, no particles. Ah, still unfinished. Ah, there we go. Trillions of FE. Trillions of FE. Oh, boy. But I think that finally means we're ready to enable this thing. And we definitely have enough power in that laser. Yeah, 2 billion is more than 400 million, I'd say. This whole episode, we've been working up to this moment. Let's send it. Boom! What? It didn't start. Why didn't it start? Oh, it- What? What is happening? Should there be a noise? It's got plasma. Well, it's losing plasma. What if we increase the injection rate? I don't know, to three. Oh, I forgot. The hall room, the most important part. Oh my god, I just wasted two billion FE! Ah! All I had to do was make this hall room. It's not even that hard. I am completely distraught. The step that I was missing was a tiny bit of DT fuel that we then put into the hall room like that. That was it. I think, yeah, we're well out of plasma. Okay, finally it built up. Nuclear power plant launch in the rain. And this time I am not going to forget to load the hall room. Please work. Yes, yes, there it is. That's the thing we're looking for, yes. Uh, I can take down this mess now. Oh, it's so cool. I love this thing. As you can see, it's already inputting about 260,000, which again is like the maximum of the other reactor we have. You know, I just realized bitrate's gonna tank with that warbling ball in this rain. Hold on. Nothing gets in the way of this moment. So we're gonna be able to build all the way up to about 400,000 FE per tick. But that's only because we're only in injecting two millibuckets at a time of tritium and deuterium. And I'm pretty sure that's something we can keep up with here. I think we're making 100 deuterium per tick, but we don't want to blow stuff out, so I'm gonna just go to 50. Boom, much bigger rate. But that heat is gonna go crazy high, and our power generation is climbing into the millions per tick! Tritium is holding a very strong. Deuterium is similarly strong. It's a reactor rave! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look at how much power we're making! All I have to do is slap a flux plug onto this thing and hook it into the network and... Oh my god! Obviously, this is the priority input, and I'll allow it to bypass for infinite. That's so powerful! This guy is gonna max out at 10 million FE per tick. Still not actually close to being able to produce antimatter at a great rate, but that's not, like, possible anyways. I'm so happy, I'm so relieved. Hey, our super compressed helium's done! I need the most expensive item in the game. You see, my friend Carl the Space Duck is trapped on the icy planet of Glacio, and in order to get way past our solar system, System, I need antimatter. And it's not cheap. That's 400 million FE for one one thousandth of a bucket. I need at least one bucket. That's billions of power. Now this disco ball generates billions of power, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't make the polonium we need. That comes from nuclear waste. And in order to get nuclear waste, I need one of these things. But we need 10 million millibuckets of nuclear waste for one antimatter pellet, and I want three. So we're gonna have to build this thing like way bigger. And like four of them. And if you don't pair them with one of these big turbines, they're prone to, you know, blowing up. 
So we need a pretty massive amount of resources in order to pull this off. Looks like we have some lead laying around, so I'll run that through ore processing, but I feel like we're gonna need a lot more. Meaning I think I gotta take our big drill out for a spin. Also, I saw your guys' comments that this is apparently like permanent elytra. Oh, yeah, would you look at that? That's really cool. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's DJojo on maximum FOV. All right, let's pack this thing up and head to the mines. That is a pretty good haul from the mines. And as far as what we need, this looks like our lead and osmium haul. Not terrible. Honestly, I don't know if it's enough though, but that's what our ore processing line is for. And I also upgraded everything to ultimate, so it should run for a pretty long while. And you know what? Let's get everything upgraded to blue tier. Yeah. We're now the proud owner of 2.5 thousand lead and 2,000 osmium. Of course, that's not the end of things because reactors require brass and steel. Yep, reactor glass requires lead, but reactor casing requires lead and steel casing. Oh boy. And our steel supply and brass supply is pretty low, mostly because I made a lot of brass hands. There we go, five stacks of brass hands. PYO, man. No! That was a mistake, but that happened during the live stream, so it's not relevant. In any case, I have to make a lot more of this stuff. So let's add a little temporary setup here for us to create as much brass as we need. And with a little bit of lava, we've got ourselves a respectable temporary brass generation machine. But you got nothing if you don't have access of it, so let's add some more copper and zinc. That'll do it. Now we also have to solve our lack of steel. And if you're unaware, steel can be made inefficiently with coal dust or super efficiently with enriched carbon that comes from coal or charcoal. We're doing okay on coal and not great on charcoal, but I don't know if four stacks of this stuff is going to be enough, but I guess we'll at least give it a shot. While brass and steel work in the background, we gotta get started on concrete. See, we actually need somewhere to put these enormous reactors and turbines, and I kind of don't want to put four volatile nuclear bombs near my base. And space is about as far from my base as I can get. But that means we need a super fancy space station, which naturally means concrete, of course. So I'm gonna be adding three new silos to our lovely industrial district. Why is there a hero brine pig over there? This will be a gravel farm. Over here, we can fit in a sand farm. And lastly, we get our grubby hands on a concrete maker. But uh, we're kinda out of bricks. Yeah, we gotta fix that. Thankfully, we have quite a bit of clay balls though, so that shouldn't be actually an issue. This should hopefully be enough bricks to tie us over. Oh, absolutely. I'd also like to grab some terracotta which is, of course, easiest by just smelting down some clay. And thankfully, I think we have, yeah, a ton of granite. Do we have any mangrove? No. Uh, we do have a propagule, though. Never actually grown one of these trees before in Minecraft. Kind of have no idea if it can just grow on grass. Uh, whoa. Yeah, okay. Where's the tree part? Hello? Is it just, it's just the roots? <laughs> what the? Wait. Oh, no, okay. Oh, wow, that's, that's not a lot of wood, huh? Oh, these are, these are gonna, these are gonna be annoying. These are gonna be annoying, aren't they? I can already feel it. That whole tree was 22 logs only? Okay, I really hope this works with the create saw. I am begging the create devs to have implemented this as a feature. I mean, I guess I'd put it on the root. Please, 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 please. Yes, yes, that makes life so much better. I love the create mod. Alrighty, this should be enough. Herobrine pig is still there. Ugh. Wanna see me build a silo? Wanna see me do it two more times? Ooh, they're looking pretty good, but they're also looking pretty red. I think I need to introduce another color to this. Ta-da! Hey, these are looking pretty good. I think adding the little stones to the bottom of the- Ooh, I don't like this. Hold on. Eh. Ah. Eh. Bah. There we go, that's buried. Yeah, I think that just adds a little good splash of color and a little bit of lore. You know, these silos are built on top of a, a quarry, and that's where they're digging all their cobblestone out of. But speaking of cobblestone, these quarries, uh, they are, they're pretty empty. They're pretty, uh, oh, hey there. They're pretty full of nothing, so I think I ought to fix that. So we have ourselves some igneous extruders for cobble gen, and the illustrious crushing wheels, we're gonna need more of those. And I, I don't know why I'm bothering explaining everything. You guys know what a gravel on a sand farm looks like. I'm gonna try to power all of these off of a single steam engine engine that's going to be powered by bioethanol. So even though this is only a level one steam engine structure, it should count as a level two. And that's kind of going to be enough, I think. Or this guy, we can actually use a quantum entangle porter on the biofuel network and then have it eject fluids to the right. And there we go. Boom. That is level one. Right. 
right. It's not big enough to be level two. Easy fix, easy fix, easy fix. Oh, eh, maybe not if you're foolish. Ahem. Okay, there we go. That is a level two steam engine. Yes? Yes. Cool. Off of one blaze burner. You guys know how gravel and sand work, so I'm gonna go get to it. Nothing too difficult. We have ourselves the gravel farm. Our cobblestone comes from here, and it goes down into these chutes. Same deal with the sand farm over there, and I added this decoration element where the items are actually transported out of these chute lines right into the concrete tunnel. Er, tower. Er, what are these? Silo. It's been too long since I played Stardew Valley. No way! All we have to do now is get the concrete mixer set up in here, which shouldn't be too hard, but there's a feature of it I kind of want to add. With the mixer powered and hoppers uh, on the output, we can now actually, you know, use the sand and gravel farm. But concrete needs dye. So I was thinking we should have a little input on the side of this. We'll have to cut into one of the stones, but we could have an input port for the kind of dyes that we want. So we have a loading depot out here that is just going to kind of run into the structure of this, pull it out to here and be ready to receive, or actually, hmm, that should be the output line. Not an issue, we can just drop a hopper right here and have an andesite funnel into it like that. Perfect. And then we could have the concrete powder output like so. Actually though, that makes me worried that some of the dye will end up on this belt. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just move this one back. Hoppers are still useful, even in the create mod. And then what we could do here is cover up the hole with a brass tunnel just to make it look really cool. And then for consistency, get ourselves some brass casing running in on the loading depot. Oh, that looks good, yes. Although maybe a brass funnel would look better here, but I believe that has to go into an inventory. Maybe it works on tunnels, I have no idea. I do like how this looks, that's actually a really good look. Hmm. I'm gonna leave it like that and we'll see what happens. And of course, out the front is going to be our output. And again, I'd like to see if this functions because I think that actually looks really good. All right, last thing to do is power these things. And I think we're gonna want them running pretty fast. So just use this. Very nice. I love it when a project comes together. And lastly, we need a place to store our new found stuff. One barrel is not a lot of storage, but you know what? I think it looks cute in the context of things. And this actually came out looking pretty good. I'm really proud of these uh, silos actually. You know what? Let's add a barrel loading dock here as well. Yeah. That looks sharp. Very, very sharp. I love it. All that's left now is to fire up those igneous extruders and see what we got. Yes, gravel and sand. Oh, I love it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, and only sand in here. Beautiful. And now we can crush up some bones to get a large amount of white dye and, well, unfilter this from the stream. Beautiful, even. Oh, I do want to replace this barrel here. Perfect. And then we can crush up the bone meal to turn it into even more white dye, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, that's plenty. And that should mean if I drop a stack of white dye into this here loading barrel, is it producing? Oh my, hey, it does work. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, the brass on brass looks really good. And there we go. That's our cobblestone, cobblestone. Why do I keep saying cobblestone? Concrete, concrete farm. That's so cool. Yeah, I am, I am super into that. I am honestly super into that. With the concrete farm built, I actually do need a lot of black dye. So that means a coal or charcoal farm. Cause yeah, I'm very much completely out of this stuff. So it wouldn't be bad to get a tree farm up and running. And honestly, I'm thinking I'm just gonna cram it back here. It doesn't have to be anything too big or fancy. Although come to think of it, if I do spruce trees like I usually do, it's gonna make pods all everywhere, right? Is there a way to avoid that? I mean, I guess probably doing a little bit of a build around it. Well, first things first, I think I'm gonna get the actual tree farm laid out here and then see what we're working with. Tree farms are always delightfully simple with the create mod, so I'm not too worried about getting it set up. I just wanna make it look a bit nicer than just, you know, a big circular farm in the middle of nowhere. And this should be a fully functional windmill bearing double spruce tree farm. Ooh, that's a mouthful, except for that part. I need to fix that part. Should be able to just let a rip here, and yep, that's looking pretty good. These guys are filtered, so if I drop the stack of those in, we should hear some tree plantage. Yes. Might need an extra saw on the edge of there, actually. I think I think you need a third saw for this one. Hold on. There we go. Now we should have a fully functioning tree farm that definitely works and will not immediately break, probably. Unless, of course, the deployers can't reach the edges, which might look they can. Okay. It appears I'm forgetting my basic tree farming. Maybe I need to make a video on that. And definitely first try. There we go. Functioning tree farm. All the deployers, all the saws, all the chests, everything we need. There's even a portable storage interface. Boy, do I love tree farming. I'm not, however, a super fan of all this podzol that's going to be spread around the tree farm. Although that isn't too bad of a range, all things considered. 
I mean, I could just let well enough be and not really do anything about it and just, you know, move on with the video that already is going to take a while. Or I could just, like, freehand build a lumber yard that's going to look like crap. So, of course, that's what we're doing. So, I began by just starting to clear the area. And you're getting voiceover DJojo because I just kind of locked it in for the next hour. I just relaxed and did some building. And I have to say, I'm really starting to enjoy the building process. I got a simple stone and andesite layer down where the pods would grow. And then I wanted to build a little, like, factory or hut, like a miniature storage device, but the thing was I wanted it to have a copper roof, and the oxidizing of the copper was actually pretty easy because of mechanism, but waxing it needed bees, and it turns out all the beehives around my house were vacated. No idea what happened. So I had to go on a bee adventure, and when I finally found them, they were almost ready to fill up the hive. But I got tired of waiting, so I tried breeding them, but then the parents went into the hive anyways, and after I took the hive, the baby bee, I guess, just didn't really see much of a point in living. So after being traumatized for life, I was able to get a block of honeycomb and wax up all of our copper, and I managed to use it to build this adorable miniature storage hut. You know, I know I said this would look bad, but I'm actually really proud of it. I think it came out great. I love the sheet metal look, and I made the, you know, traditional little log piles around the area, smoothed out the terrain. I'm, I'm actually really proud of this miniature lumber yard, and when you're looking at it from, like, where you're intended to, the little hut actually does block the tree farm, too. So it, it is a tree farm build. And on the inside here, we just have the sorting and storage system that just trashes the sticks and the saplings, and, you know, it didn't need to look like this, but I thought it would be cool. And then, of course, we have ourselves the actual spruce outputs that we can now turn into charcoal or whatever else we want. So, we now have concrete and black dye for the space station. We are pretty much almost there. Oh, well, almost ready to build. Now, as you can see from this material list, we need a ton of turbine casings and reactor casings and fission assemblies, and yeah, I should probably get started on crafting all these because that's 500 turbine vents. Well, that was a very long hour of my life, but now we have this backpack filled to the brim with the materials I need for the mega nuclear space station. The last stuff we need is the SPS casings and the SPS ports, some of the most expensive items in the game. And it looks like I'm out of HDPE, which we need a bunch of. Okay, that took a bit, but it should be enough. And now we can make the 60 SPS casing required for a fully functioning super critical. Ah. Let's grab a few bits from here, and there we go, except we're not done because we need ports. I'm using six of them in this configuration, which is excessive, but, I mean, wow, that is really excessive. Hopefully I can make 24, hmm. I really meant it when I said this was the most expensive multi-block in the game. Okay, there we go, six SPS ports, and we have ourselves a fully functioning SPS. Nope, we need a coil, that's right, I forgot the coil, hold on. One of these guys is needed, Oh, and of course it takes some of these. I had to make like 10 million of them. And now we should have all of the resources in order to make a fully functional, super critical phase shifter. Boom, there we go. Drop that in the backpack of amazingness. And I think we're just about ready to head to space. Well, with this random assortment of items, we are ready to head into space. And these four ingredients are actually going to be used to literally build us a space station. That's right, I'm serious. We are making a space station orbiting the moon that we will fill with nuclear power. All right, so up here in the orbital area, we are going to create, uh, oh, we don't, iron plate, I do have iron plate. I mean iron sheets from the create mod. Well, okay, back to earth. Hopefully iron sheets work then. I thought it was iron plating, but then I think it's not. Oh, uh, looks like the windmill's feeling a little wiggly right now. Hopefully that doesn't keep up. And back up to space again. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Boom, space station. Uh, this doesn't look like oh uh, oh I hate it when it loads a new <laughs> a new one okay cool we should have a space station somewhere that's just the moon whoa there it is awesome nice we have a base for our space be beautiful welcome to space station D Jojo where there's not a single sound in the world because there's no oxygen and there's not gonna be. Now I've got some plans, legitimate plans that I made in creative and they took me forever because nuclear reactors like to blow up and I wanted to avoid that. So I have this light matica that I need to alter a bit, give me a second. And I think that's lined up actually, whoa, oh I gotta be careful here. Uh, I reloaded my chunks to fix a glitchiness and, and it's gone. The, I don't know how to use this mod. I fixed it. So now if I'm not wrong, I can just follow this schematic here and it will tell me exactly how to build this. Yeah. Isn't there like an easy place 
I want I want an easy place. Easy place mode. Aha. So I can just Oh, that's that's nice. I like this. I like this. Oh, amazing. So yeah, all I have left to do is to build up the schematic. And since this is Forge Matica, not Light Matica, because I'm not in fabric, I can't do replay mod. But what I can do is force my editor to do a music montage. The great nuclear space station has finally come together. Oh, this was expensive. Each of these four reactor and turbine pairings are all gonna be pumping out tons of nuclear waste, but we do have to fuel them and we do have to fill them with water. And for all of that, I kind of want to use a quantum entangler porter setup, but that's a bit expensive and is definitely going to require us to do a little bit of work here. So, unfortunately for the time being, we have to head off of the space base and head back down to Earth. Uh, but not before I remember to put on the rotor blades. Those are pretty important. One of our first chores down here is we actually have to take this provider and set it not to power surge, okay? This thing needs to be priority zero. That's because it's extremely important that the wind turbines up in space don't overflow or they're blowing me sky high or well sky higher i guess mixing up some endurium as well as smelting up some chromatic compound to really get this party started here because we need a lot of that shadow steel goodness boom i love the conversion effect five tesseracts okay two more tesseracts coming right up and a side order of five quantum entangle porters pretty simply we're going to be using these guys to take in water on the water network and then back on the moon base fill all the fellas up with a ton of water because otherwise they explode. Oh, I won't lie, this looks cool from above. Alrighty, let's get this thing hooked up with water. And there we go, each of the massive reactor towers is full of water, and the turbines will actually cycle the water back into them, so we don't need to inject any more water. What we do have to do is go back to Big Blue and make ourselves a centrifuging system in order to extract a ton of fuel. Because in order to make all the antimatter pellets that I want to is going to take millions of fuel, and I am just not going to do that through your rate. Whoa! Ah! Whoops. Dismounted a little early. Anyways, we're not doing that through uranium. Instead, I have a stellarite crystal that uh, I can't look at it, but I have it, okay? I can grab this quantum entangle porter and repurpose it for even better things. And by the way, here is the refined stellarite. I promise I have it. I got that fancy little nugget on a live stream, and it took me a whole four hours to get, and we need... Three more of those, I think. But that's that's for another project. Right now, we're making a centrifuge. That's because if I whip up this centrifuge here, as well as a chemical oxidizer, we can do something pretty special. Fissile fuel produced by uranium is slow and expensive, but with these two machines, we can turn this refined stellarite into literally all the fissile fuel we need for an antimatter pellet. It goes right in here, and it gasses on up into a bucket of gaseous stellarite. We should be able to output that, yep, right into the centrifuge, which turns it into 10,000 millibuckets of fissile fuel per one millibucket of gaseous stellarite. That's a really good time. So now we can fill the water tank with, I guess, fissile fuel, which is kind of an accident, but I guess water is now also fissile fuel, I, I suppose. But boy, oh boy, does that make an absolute ton. And I know you've been waiting on it for the whole video. It is time to launch the nuclear reactors. We have the fuel, we have the water, we have the space station, we have everything we need to start making antimatter. Back on space base, we should see these things beginning to fill up with some fissile fuel. Oh, interesting. It looks like they don't want to because this is already being used as a water port. Not an issue. We can whip up some pressurized tubes to make their life just that much better. Hopefully this should do the trick. Oh, wait, no. It's just because uh, gases aren't set to eject, are they? That's, that's the issue. But 
May as well keep our tube separate, huh? I'm gonna be setting all of these to input-output just so that I can share the uh, fuel between all four of them. I want this to be running evenly. That's gonna be the best case scenario. Now, one of the final touches is this daylight detector because believe it or not, there's a day-night cycle even this high up in the sky. And unfortunately, the solar, solar these guys won't produce polonium in the nighttime, which will cause the reactors to fill up on energy and they explode. All this hard work, kaboom. So for safety, I'm controlling all of them through this one daylight sensor. And all I have to do now is to shift right click on these guys here and it will start up the reactors. We should hear that annoying sound. No. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, that's right. We're in space. It's not going to make a sound. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I can start activating these right now, and we should see them all kicking on all of the turbines beginning to spin, recycling the water into it. There we go. Of course, nothing here is moving particularly fast. Uh, we are producing a small amount of nuclear waste into polonium, but this really isn't anything. What we have to do is set the burn rates of these nuclear reactors to their absolute maximum, which is 40 millibuckets a tick, and it's going to go hard. You can see the water level drops, but it's holding steady. It's holding strong. Good, 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 good. This is an extremely dangerous amount of nuclear waste to be producing all at once, but uh, if you could believe it, it's not even going to be that much. Uh, I think it just got too late in the day, so all of them were actually disabled, so I suppose this is the safest time to be doing this, uh, because, well, I, I gotta wait for the sun to rise again. And you can't sleep in space. No idea why. You can sleep, but it doesn't advance the time, because... I don't know, world of madness, I guess. Ah, but as the sun rises in the distance, so too shall our nuclear empire rise. There it is. We should be active, yes, and all of these are now going to start filling up with the power, which we cannot let them do, so we are going to put a flux plug onto this fellow. It's already full of polonium. We're going to set this to uh, power surge bypass limit into the network, and boom! We are now producing... Oh, wow. 0 0.016 millibuckets of antimatter. And we should see all of the turbines emptied. Yes, they should not at all retain any energy. Because if they do, we're all going to die in a horrible, fiery nuclear explosion. And that would suck a lot. And this is the pathway to antimatter pellets. And you can see just how fast it runs. Yep, we need 1,000 millibuckets of that three times to do what I want to do. So, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna wait here for a while, I guess. While I do, could could, could you subscribe? Because we're like really close to 100,000 subscribers and the community's getting insane. Like today, my editor, who's editing this right now, made fan art of me as a gnome. I like that, but I'd also like to have even more of you guys in the community. So join the Discord, subscribe to the channel, 100,000 subscribers. I've, I've been working on a big project in the background that took seven, 70 hours to film. So, that's where I've been. And this is where I'll be. This is probably going to take 70 hours on its own. What are you still doing here? It's been nine months since Carl the Space Duck was trapped on the icy planet of Glacio. So today is the day that I finally rescue him. This video doesn't end until I beat the game. And not just beat the game, but gift Carl with the most ultimate item I can possibly make. But we're gonna need a lot of antimatter to make that happen. So let's check on our generation progress. No more fuel. Meaning we have an antimatter pellet, right? No. In fact, we barely even have a third. Something went wrong. I don't know what it was, but the Stellarite just didn't convert into all the fuel. And it might have to do with the fact that I'm in space and not on Earth where all that stuff is happening. Which means we need a lot more Stellarite than I thought. Like a huge amount. Because I'm not moving all this back to Earth. It looks way too cool up here. I might have to make these reactors bigger because it took forever to get that tiny amount. But I gotta focus on getting the special red rock. Whoa, look at this absolutely dripped out zombie villager. I was meant to be recording another clip, but he's so cool looking. I think I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna name him Midas because, I mean, look at him. Okay, come on, Midas. We gotta get you inside. You're a beekeeper? That's- that's not even a profession. Don't pay mind to the peasantry, Midas. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Midas. I'm sorry. Oof. Good. Before his helmet broke. Nice. Well, you'll be nice and safe in here. You enjoy your stay now, Midas. You enjoy. Anyways, I meant to say that I have a plan to speed up our mercury mining mission. You see, the giant drill we have up there has to be stopped every now and then because it fills up. But I have this enormous backpack. So if I could somehow turn this enormous backpack into the storage we'd be gaming. And I'm pretty sure with magnet upgrades, I'll be able to do exactly that. I believe if I slot this magnet upgrade in here, it means I'll magnetize items directly into the backpack. Oh, that's huge. Oh, that's huge. And the best part is I can upgrade it to make it even more powerful and add filtering options. So I can just tell it that it can only pick up mercury cobblestone and these slots will pick up everything. That should mean we can take another hot tourist trip over to Mercury and really upgrade the drill. And who boy, look at the tunnel that we've already dug. Pulled this little number off on a live stream. And here is the big drill that I have affectionately been calling the zip bomb because you need to install a packet extender in order to be able to use it. And one of the weirdest ways I've ever upgraded anything is by removing something from it because if we take out the storage, it won't be able to pick up the items and we'll be able to suck them up. Now I will leave this chest here so that it can pick up the rails and stuff and use the cobblestone in order to keep the tunnel, you know, a tunnel. But otherwise, I think we're kind of ready. Theoretically speaking, this should just work. So if I fuel this thing with some charcoal and let it rip, yep, there's gonna be some lava immediately, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue unless it stops the rails from being placed down, which I don't think it is. It is causing a bit of a cascade here, but I should be, oh my gosh, yep, I should be sucking up all of the items. Boy, that's a little stuttery, isn't it, though? That's so much. That's so much so fast, though, isn't it? Ooh, my frames. Ooh, my frames. Interesting. Well, this very much isn't lag efficient, but I'll tell you what. I won't have to stop this thing every time just to empty it out, because I just opened my backpack and we already have 6,000 items in it. Is it lag efficient? No. Is it better than the digital miner that you all keep commenting about? Yes, it's so much better. I think I'm gonna run this for a while and see how much we can come away with. I bet it's gonna be be done. Well, it wasn't lag efficient, but it really was mercury cobblestone efficient. I don't actually know if that's even going to be enough for what we need, but there's only one way to find out. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, did I just chunk? Uh oh. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my god. Uh, which one is these? I'll, I'm taking them both out. Well, yeah. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. By the way, the way I fixed it, XL Packets Renewed. That was the mod I installed. Anyways, we now need to crush up all of this stone, and I, I don't... I, I think this will take a while. I mean, maybe not. You know, maybe I'd be surprised. Eh. Uh, that's... That's actually not too bad. That is surprisingly fast. Well, maybe that'll still take a long time. Yeah, we could do better. 36 crushing reels. That's gonna be a lot faster. Honestly, 36 crushing reels is a lot. I'm just gonna slap them down here. And the item collection will be this fan. It isn't lazy if it's efficient. And then, yeah, we basically just place 36 crushing wheels down in a line like this. That's, that's, that's just beautiful right there. That's just gorgeous. These fine fellows are just gonna sit right on top. And then we'll run a big old belt. And this is... That, that, that's the farm, it's done. I actually don't know if a fan can reach this far, so I think we'll use water pathways. Did you know that you could wash ice into packed ice for better gains? You can. Now there's the teensy tiny issue of, you know, powering it. Normally I'd be shivering in my timbers because this is gonna be like 80,000 stress units. But we can just use these electric motors. They're like a level one steam engine and just cost energy. And although that guy shut down because of a chunk loading error, I'm prepping to start him back up. And that gives us pretty much infinite energy. I only need to make a few more of them, and they're pretty cheap, actually. And with the hall room installed, once I blast this thing, it should work. Certainly have the energy. Should go like that. Yep. So you don't break again, buddy. No idea why, anyways. Well, that's plenty of energy. I think I'll need eight of these. So I can pull a belt out like that and just start slapping them on the sides. That's it should be them configured, and then hopefully I can just slap a ton of elite cables on them and it'll all work. Boop. Whoa! 
Yep. Oh, wow. Man, I really love these. They're so useful. And then this is our little input belt all hooked up. Beautiful. We do want to slap a stopper block right on the end of this so our items don't go flying off. And that should be this thing done and dusted. Should be that I can dump my backpack right here and just... Bap. Oh, yep. Wait, really? Two crushing wheels? That can pull items out as fast as two crushing wheels? Are you kidding me? Isn't there some kind of trick with, like, pulsing these things really fast that'll make it run faster? Uh-huh, yeah, okay. So if I, like, spam click this, it goes faster. It's not really fast, though. Also, did we make any crystals out of all that? Zero? What if I just opened my backpack and did this? Oh, that seems to work. Okay, cool. So just a, just, just a little tiny, oh, let me turn this off, little tiny bit of manual item moving. Ah, the belts only pick up stuff so fast, huh. Now we're getting clusters though. Okay, well what if I was high up in the air so that I wasn't like picking up all the blocks? Now the belts only pick up and move items so quickly. Fascinating. We thinks we need to get a little bit more creative with this one. And I do have an idea, actually. Perhaps our old friend, the powered minecart, can help us out. Oh, hello there. So now we have this minecart that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? So how well does this work if I were to just fill it up with items like this? Oh, shoot, they don't. Okay, dang. But hold on, I don't think that's the end of our Minecraft, or minecart expenditure here. I think we combine our two ideas. A minecart rail, and the player dropping items onto a belt. I get in a minecart that's going back and forth. Ahem. Okay, a minecart going back and forth, there we go. And then I just need to get like a good angle here and I can toss items like that. Yes, oh that works, oh my god that actually works. So I could just be the item distributor and then the minecart makes sure they all land everywhere. <gasps> okay, but there's an issue, ah, of course. Okay, but with that fixed, I get in the minecart, I orient my mouse and I just toss stacks and stacks of the cobblestone out onto the belt. Oh, this is so cool. You can see it getting picked up behind the inventory. Ah, that's so smart. Well, this will empty a backpack out in no time. Oh, wow, that did not take any time at all. <gasps> and I, I think it like that was like a 100% success rate too. Yeah, look at that. There's no cobblestone anywhere on the ground. There's a zombo. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa! Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, but it looks like some items... Oh, it looks like items that come out of this last one get stuck. Yeah, they would, wouldn't they? Well, I'll deal with that later. These clusters I don't care about, though. I want what they turn into refined stellarite. And there's only a 10% chance of that happening, so we better just get this party started. And I guess it's time to gamble. Do we get refined stellarite? Nope, 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 nope. Oh, there's one. Nope, 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 nope. There's one. Nope. Well, there we go. 10. 10 refined stellarite, that's actually big. You see, stellarite has more features than just fissile fuel. As I understand it, you can actually make a block of this miserable, miserable item and wow, look at that texture. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have put it down. Are you kidding me? Mm, about halfway through breaking it. Still going. Little bit longer. Come on now, right there. Yeah, okay, cool. Anyways, you can use this to make certain creative mode items. Now, it's not cheap by any means. You need a lot of antimatter, but you can even make a creative blaze cake. And wait, we can make that right now. Hmm, but I'd like to experience the creative mode side of things. So I think I'm gonna turn this into fizz off fuel so we can get more antimatter. One of these fellas goes in the oxidizer. Boy, that does take a while, but it does just turn into just an infinite amount of this stuff. There it goes. Is the space station chunk loaded? Before I blow up my world, I'm gonna back it up. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, I just left the world and there was like a million fissile fuel in here, but now it's gone. Are quantum entangler porters not reload safe? Look, we have one million fissile fuel. Then I log off. Oh, 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 ah, ah. And I checked, I'm in a chunk loaded chunk. Huh. Maybe if I chunk load the space? Maybe all the fuel was just going like into the 
No, it wasn't. Okay. <sighs> Maybe chunk loading. Maybe chunk loading is the solution, right? Right, right? That's always the issue. Because at least this is working. Like, you can see the fizzle feels going up. Ah! Just need to up my chunk loading limit, but I do have a beefy computer, so it should be fine. Let's just chunk load the entire area. Not a lot going on out here, you know? Should be okay. Oh, and, and it's nighttime now. Okay. But I guess I can test it, because it worked this way too. So, one million. Log out. That's... That's... Shoot! Shootin' dang it! Uh, I turn on cinematic camera. Blah. Okay, so we need to be processing our fissile fuel a lot faster. So yeah, these, these, these need to be a lot bigger. Because the only solution to this issue is not logging off. And it takes a lot of time to make an antimatter pellet. A lot of time. And I kind of want to use this blocks of stellarite in order to make something like, oh, I don't know, a creative fluid tank, which takes a lot of antimatter. So I think these fellows are due for an upgrade. Yeah, I would say that. Now, thankfully, we actually have a lot of fission reactor casing and a lot of structural glass. All we really need to do is add a bunch more of these control rod assemblies, which are annoying, and these fission fuel assemblies, which are also annoying. And... But we may as well start with just disabling this whole system. Bonk. Now we can at least update this thing without worry of anything exploding. And I think the first order of business is going to be extending the size of these machines just out by one. Because that'll give us a lot more space to work with on the inside. And you know what? We'll get the backside of it too, actually. Because I think if I put these ports touching each other, they'll just transfer stuff like instantly. I think. Hopefully. Or they'll blow up. Either one. Any nuclear engineers in the chat want to tell me what the uh, safety is of just tearing down the casings of a nuclear reactor that you were just running like two seconds ago. Is that like a good idea, bad idea? Let me know. Oh, poo, this has nuclear waste in it still. Okay, can't move that just yet. Don't want to irradiate anything. Oh, wait a minute. This is structural glass, not reactor glass. Ooh, whoops. I don't think it would like that very much. I don't think it would at all even like that at all even at all. Though this is going to be the new relative size of the engines, but of course we can actually make them taller if we have extra blocks. But as you can see, I can fit a lot more of these control rod assemblies, and that's what we want because that's going to allow us to burn so much more. Right now our maximum burn rate is still only 40 millibuckets because that's based off of how many rods we have, not the openness of the machine. So... I gotta craft a ton of them, and that's gonna take a while. I'm gonna do that for every single one of these, and then make them really tall, and then not blow up. So, editor, crafting and building montage! That took way too long. And the montage you maybe just watched doesn't even cover all of it because the game broke. I had a big memory leak, fried my computer. But the, the machines, they're bigger. And now you can see, instead of capping out at 40, they cap out at 104. More than double what we've done here. And since I haven't changed around any of the fluid pipe stuff, it should be okay. But let's make sure everything works without blowing up by hooking up the redstone system again. Everything seems to kick back on. Yep, no one's blowing up. You guys are fueling. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. That thing kicks right into high gear. Okay, so let's start doing the dangerous part, which is just absolutely tossing these guys into the stratosphere. 104 burn rate. Do we exploding? Yes, stop, stop. Oh, what happened? Wait, what happened to the steam? Weird. It, like, voided a ton of the steam. 
Huh, okay. Maybe we do need to use actual, like, pipes and stuff, pressurized pipes, in order to make this thing run at maximum capacity. Okay, interesting. This guy needs to be refilled, which is great, because I actually set the system up to be able to work for refills. That was scary, though. So if I change this up, though, to work something like this, where I have an output here, and then a valve here, turn that to output coolant, and then run pressurized tubes along there, that should be good enough, maybe? Anyways, the big boy's refilled, and it's finally light out. So this time, uh, instead of activating all of these at once and potentially causing a meltdown, I'm just going to activate this on its own. No. Okay, so what's happening here? Are the pipes a limiting factor? Okay, so it looks like having two entire rows of these ultimate pipes is enough to stabilize. That's really expensive. Weird feature from mechanism that just spamming pipes is how you make them go faster, but you know, th that's that's what the doctor ordered. I believe everything is set the way that it needs to be. It, it should, it should, it should, it should, it should. So theoretically, if I connect this redstone, uh, maybe I should, and I should probably activate them one by one and then hook up the redstone so you know i do not uh blow us all up so this guy is set to burn at 104 please does it work yep okay and yep okay i guess we just go down the line checking each one individually make sure nothing fills up it shouldn't because this should be consuming all of it yeah, wow, look at that consumption. So how fast are we making antimatter now? Not bad, actually, it's a huge improvement. And it looks like all of these are working as intended. None of the steam engines are filling up. Yes! So I should be able to hook the system up to redstone, activate uh, all of them now proper, and uh, once the sun sets, it'll stop. Oh, that's so exciting. God, we're producing so much faster. That is, that is so much faster. Not, like crazy fast, but maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not, well, maybe not days. Though I did load up a ton of Stellarite into the system, so I'm gonna be here for a while. Well, I can't log off or the, uh, well, all that fissile fuel goes away, so I guess I'm just hanging around. Um... That's not good. I've been AFKing for the last few hours, and I'm pretty sure I set up an oxygen thing to keep me alive, but I think I know what happened. Problem. Um, how do I get my stuff back? Okay, so I'm a bit stranded on Earth. Pretty much all my items are either on my body or in my storage system. And I need to make this QIO dashboard before I can ever access them again, which is gonna require some diamonds. But I think I have a plan, though it does actually start with needing a crafting table, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't have one. So back to square one. Well, that's a start. Now I'll need to go mining for the uh, lapis and the gold, but the diamonds I can make. And that's all thanks to this adorable little wood farm I made in the last episode. All I have to do is run run into the redstone farm, and I think I can bucket out a thing of bioethanol, maybe? Can I take it? Nope. Can I take it? Uh-oh. Can I put it, like, here? Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. Don't I have a bucket filler down in this thing? Yeah, I do! Yes! Oh, yes! I'm so glad for Pasty Jojo. Oh, I'm such a genius. So I should be able to turn this stuff into charcoal. Then these guys all enrich into enriched carbon. And then that in a press that superheated should be diamonds! Yes! Okay, okay. Well on the way. Well on the way. Well on the way. Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm gonna rich up this redstone from the redstone farm. But this is going to allow us to use the enriching factory in order to... Eh? Am I insane? Why can't I... Oh, there's carbon. Never mind. There we go. And I can make a bunch of these. I guess I, I didn't need that much, but it'll help. Oh, yeah. Also, the uh, main power supply uh, burned out. Yeah, it died. So... I'm running on backup power only. Okay, so I've got the diamonds I need, and I think in these chests, I left a ton of resources, maybe? Yep, lapis. Do I have gold in here? No, of course I don't have gold. I've used all my gold. Okay, but gold shouldn't be too hard to find. And lead. Couldn't tell you how grateful I am to be going for more lead. Lead acquired, yes. Just need some gold now. Wait, wait, I have a gold farm back at home. What am I doing mining for it? Nothing like a death that loses all your stuff to scramble your brain. And you know what? While I'm over here, I'm gonna grab the polonium that I need. Hopefully the elevator's down. Oh, it actually is. That's very helpful. This pasty Jojo. I'm such a smart boy. Uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. Uh, okay. Well, this has fissile fuel in it. Not like I don't need the backup power, so I suppose we just hook this back up. Oh, I forgot about that noise. Okay, that took a little while, but we actually now have all the polonium that we need. In fact, I, I might be able to make all the stuff that I need to do down here, maybe? Uh, not glass. 
Well, okay, that's fine. Okay, we can finally get out of here. Uh, I, I guess I'm just gonna water tower up. Oh, we're almost back. We're almost back. Okay. Okay, smelt up the raw lead. Also, we need a small amount of sand. That should give us glass panes. And then the last piece of this puzzle is I need to go and get some obsidian. Hey, here's some lava. There we go. Alrighty, with the obsidian, I can start the process of making all the alloys I need to, but that actually shouldn't be too hard. Oh, yes. So after all that effort, I should just need to pop down here for some gold. Hold on. Okay, and now I should be able to make the teleportation core, and I should be able to make the glass panes. I already have them, and that means we have a terminal. Oh, place that down. Please, please be there. Oh, my items. Oh, all of our stuff, and our backup rocket. <gasps> Finally, okay, I also should have a backup spacesuit. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, we're gonna be okay. Carl will be saved yet. Oh, okay. Wait, do I need the obituary? Ah, wait, stop, stop, wait. Don't I need the obituary? Will that come back? I haven't done that on accident before. No, I think I need the obituary item to open my gravestone, actually. Please come back. I suppose just in case it doesn't come back, we have another rocket, buddy. Oh! What? Oh. Ex oh, it's exploded? Okay. I guess. Hmm, it's only a one-way trip. Uh, I'm gonna fill that up. Okay, two trips of fuel is inside the rocket. This time, I'm not gonna blow it up. Well, hopefully not, at least. I just have to hope that my corpse is still up there. All right, there's the red death marker at least, so the game remembers I died. Hey, and the space station hasn't blown up. I was half expecting it to be gone. Oh, my things. That's weird. Why are these all off? It's data. Oh, ran out of fuel. Hey, that's a good sign. Okay, but first, oh, my things. Uh, uh. Oh, my terminal. Oh, my things. Why did you run out of energy? Oh, because these ran out of... I get it. Oh, I get to put all my things back on. Yes, yes. Wait, does that mean that while I was dead, all of the antimatter processed? Oh, right. No, I just logged off, so it voided all my... stuff. So for that whole ordeal, I have two. Well, there we go. Two out of eight. Well, like 10. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna- let's, let's just head back home and regroup a bit. Because I have a plan to get more Stellarite. Well, first step to getting more Stellarite is repowering the base. Because this thing behind me keeps shutting off and I don't know why. Like, genuinely, I don't know what keeps shutting it off, but flick. There we go. Oh, whoop. I didn't put the hall room in it. Ah, ah. Go in. Activate. Pain. Okay. Beep. There we go. Okay, there we go. That that's 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 more like it. Everything should be powering back on. Yay! I've been told that maybe I should use DT fuel instead of not DT fuel. I don't know if that's better, but mm, might as well find out, right? Alrighty, haul rum it up. Ah, go in, please. Stop ejecting. Thank you. Beep. Oh, did that kick it on? Oh, cool. Very hot. Fuel rate DT twenty two hundred million at. Surely this isn't actually making 200 million FE per tick. Is that like taking a lot of DT? Oh, that's taking a lot of DT. Ah, ah, don't run out, please. One, no, two, please, don't turn off. Oh, I don't think this is a good idea. I, I, don't, I don't actually think this is a good idea what I've done here. I think this is a bad idea. I think this sucks. DT feels sucks, who recommended this? I don't like it. Oh my god, that scared me so bad. That was such a real jump. Okay, that was a long repair. I did I did so much, so much off camera to fix this thing. It took hours. But we have our tritium supply much higher. And it turned out we had a ton of gaseous stellarite turning into fissile fuel all the time. I didn't even know. So hopefully somewhere up in Moonland we have more antimatter pellets ready, I think, maybe, possibly? But I do still have a plan for more Stellarite. We'll get to that, I just I just need to make sure that my space station didn't blow up while I was fixing that. You know, I know I set everything up correctly, but every time I come back to the space station, I really do just expect it to have exploded. Whoa, three more pellets, actually? Okay, that's, that's, that's actually huge. Wow. Wait, so we're sitting on five antimatter. Ooh. Also, I fixed the priority issues on this guy, so it should always be receiving energy. Hopefully that means I can still AFK up here. I have no idea. But now that we have antimatter squared away, it is time to think about more Stellarite. Because after all, we can't do anything without more Stellarite. 
Well, at least we can't do anything creative without more Celerate. Technically, I could make a rocket and save Carl right now, but I know he'd be disappointed in me if I didn't have, like, some ultimate item to show him. And that solution comes in the form of this. 2,320 mechanical drills. Because the zip bomb, it's, it's just not big enough. It just isn't good enough for me. Wow, I can really get the... Wow, I... Wow, look how close we are. Hi. Have you subbed to my channel yet? Do you like the bridge of my glasses? 2,000 drills might sound bad, but I have my two drill contraptions that I can tear down, which I'll do on top of this hill to avoid voiding any blocks. And I mean, they won't give us everything we need, but hey, they'll be a really good start. Well, it looks like we're starting with 400 drills. Not a lot, but hey, you know, it could be a lot worse. I'm gonna guess, yeah, we kinda need a lot more andesite alloy and casings. And honestly, this is just kind of gonna be a lot of waiting for stuff to craft. So, I think through the power of editing, I'm gonna have 2,000 drills in my backpack. Well, that, that took way too long, but two and a half thousand drills, I've got them. And that means the Mercury Muncher is almost ready to go. This is the second video in a row I've made a mega drill. Also, if you haven't watched the last video, watch it. Audrey's in it. It's so funny, and it needs to do better. But for now, it's off to Mercury! And don't get me wrong here, the zip bomb was a great time, and it mind all this, but look at how much more stone there is in this world. I want to extract it. So, I've got my friend Schematic Cannon, and my friend Schematic. Just gotta line this guy up. Dear God. You, sir, however, belong in the floor. This is what 2000 Drills looks like scrolling by you, if you've ever wondered. Well, lovely jubbly. Let's return my frame rate to normal. My backpack will be the supplier of- <laughs> Look at it facing straight down! Goofy! How are we on materials? Sweet, didn't forget nothing. And last thing we need is just a lot of gunpowder. Go! I think this is gonna take a really, really, really long time. So, just gonna, you know, Hang out here, with the magma cubes, alone, in the middle of space. <sighs> Holy, alright, yeah, that, that's about done. That took so long, I had enough time to do this bit. And yes, I did clear that hill by hand. So, you know, do, do the thing, do it. But we do not have need of this anymore, L at least hopefully. It looked like it missed a few spots down there, but that's alright. We have some backup materials in here in case we need to use them. I wonder why the schematic cannon didn't clear these blocks. I've actually never seen it miss blocks like that, but oh well. Also, um, huh? Why is it buried? Well, this absolute behemoth, uh, that should make us a lot of stone. And there's a lot of storage to deal with it too, so also good. If this doesn't get me to creative tier items, uh, the genuinely nothing else will. So let's get this bad boy ready to fire up. Load it up with plenty of rails, and uh, presumably this doesn't break my game and destroy everything, but maybe I should actually back up the world? Well, let's see. Dear God. All right, I guess we should kick this thing off before too much lava comes down because there are not anything to stop the lava. There's no, I can't speak, just go. <gasps> Lord, whoa, this is, this is, this is a lot, this is a lot. Oh, I forget that lava flows so freely in this. Well, um, sure. It's a good thing I'm immune to lava. Can I see in it? Like, am I, I'm blind in the lava. Can I turn, can I change that? Ah, uh, let's just turn fog off. Does that, oh, that does do it. Okay, that's actually super helpful. All right, no fog for me. Beautiful, thank you, Embedium. Well, I am, uh, well, I'm gonna run this for about uh, 20 minutes or so, watch some YouTube, you know, see what happens. I'm already picking up, are you kidding me? I'm already picking items up. It's been, it's been, it's been 10 minutes. All of these vaults in 10 minutes, stop, stop moving. Hopefully I can turn this into blocks. Please? Whoa! What? What was that? You're, you're kidding. That was like 10 minutes. Well, collecting all the cobblestone wouldn't be too bad. I just need to build a little bit of roof so that the lava doesn't bother us. And then I can just break all these vaults and my magnet backpack will suck all the items out. I thought this would be a large amount of vaults. Apparently no. Also, this roof is immediately, immediately annoying to make. If I like, if I'm just in lava, will it burn all the stuff? That seems pretty instant. I actually feel like it will, like the closer I get. Oh, yeah, okay, so that burns stuff. Mm, man. All right, roof it is. Anyways, let's see what our haul is. Are you kidding me? Is that 600,000 in, in 10 minutes? Okay, this video's already taken over 20 hours to film, and it's all been worth it. 600,000? 
with 1.4 thousand iron. This is the best machine I've ever made. Now all I gotta do is replace all the vaults and uh, send it off again. Let's fire this bad boy up again, and I guess I'm just gonna sit here until I have, I don't know, like a few million? So after all that, 13, we got thir 13 out of the 144 that I need for creative tank. Ugh. So I did an entire live stream where I tripled the size of my drill and mined 10 million blocks of the cobblestone. That was so many blocks of cobblestone that off stream, I doubled the size of our crushing mechanism and I also added vaults to it to use the uh, deposit upgrade inside the backpacks. And it still took over an hour and a half to process it all down. So the grand total of Stellarite clusters we got from that live stream is this, this, not even two rows. As far as I'm aware, we need four rows to guarantee getting the amount we need, but hey, maybe I get lucky or something, right? I really hope that we do get lucky, otherwise I'm going to have to go back to AFKing on my giant drill, and I really, really, really don't want to do that. So, I'm just gonna sit here. The mixer's just about finishing all the clusters, and, and this is not enough. We're short, like, 40. So, I gotta go back. That's, that's gonna take a few million, but I, I might be able to make another right back pack with all this uh, netherite scrap i have no idea yep that's that's a lot of netherite actually could i just make netherite stack upgrades instead of a netherite backpack i could make one i could make one that's big that's a big that's a big whoop wait where, where did it go where did my backpack go i don't think any of these are my backpack what what did i did i just lose what just happened how did that happen how did that happen? Oh yeah, look at that. Whoops. I, I tried it with a netherite block for some reason. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you, Q. Wait, is it in the crafting thing? Oh, oh I, I hate QIO. I hate it. Bap, boop, bap. Blah. So now each of these stacks can hold a lot. How much? A half a million. And as long as it's ingots, I can use some of the remaining netherite to upgrade this to a netherite backpack. Is it ingots or blocks? It's blocks. Okay. Oh, wait, no. It's one. Why is it one ingot for the backpack and nine blocks for the actual upgrade? Huzzah! Two more upgrade slots. Well, no reason not to use them. Oh, well, I guess because we don't have enough gold. That'd be a reason. Well, I can squeeze one more tier three out of this. It won't be a huge amount of extra storage, but, uh, you know, it'll help. Oh, wait. That means... Wait. What? Oh, never mind. That brings it to four million blocks. Right. I forget it's multiplicative. Okay. Well, that's a lot. Well, back to this miserable place. Now I've got to follow this enormous chasm all the way back to the mining drill. Ah. Oh, I think I see it in the distance. There it is. The drill. Which I think is stuck in a wall right now, but that's fine, you know, who cares? Well, the plan here is honestly to just let this run for as long as possible, and hopefully it doesn't get stuck. Oof, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I sit in the chair, there we go, the magnet upgrade kicks in, and we're off to the races. Boy, that's a lot of lava. Well, it's not fun to a AFK, but, but I will. It looks like we've ran out of charcoal, and we are sitting on about 9 million cobblestone. Like... That should be enough, right? I shouldn't have to use this thing ever again. I don't like this thing. This is the best machine I've ever made! And now I just have to fly all the way back. And I was in that one for a while. So... Yep. Oh, hey, look, it's the subscribe sign that I built. For you guys, that was like a minute ago. For me, it's been a real-life day. Oh, at least I should be free of this planet. All that's left to do is swap out my magnet upgrade for a deposit upgrade, make sure it's filtered correctly, and then I can just sit on top of these vaults and do this and this and this and this and this and this for a really, really, really long time. I'm so glad. I'm so glad about these things that are happening to me. You know what? It's for Carl, so it's worth it. Okay, all 10 million processed down, and it looks like we've got a similar amount to last time, so at least there's that. That should mean that we should be all good when it comes to actually, you know, raw Stellarite clusters for this, so all of that goes back in here, and uh, now I do even more waiting. Yep, just more waiting for refined Stellarite. Mix on up, buddy. And round two has finally finished. This time, we have enough, and of course, a lot more netherite. Not that I'll ever use this. But we should have more than enough Stellarite to make the 14, I think it is, blocks that we need for Creative Tank. Or is that 16? I think that's 16. Of course, the real question is whether or not we have enough antimatter. Alrighty, how much do we got? Four pellets in here with 506. I... Yes! 
I was gonna say, I think that's enough, and that is eight antimatter, 16 blocks of stellarite. Oh my, we actually have creative tank. Oh my god, this is taking so long to make, and we finally have it. So it should be blocks of stellarite around the outside. Boom. Antimatter pellets on the inside. And finally, one fluid tank, and that is creative tank. <laughs> so a creative fluid tank allows you to basically just put any fluid inside of it, and it becomes completely... Wait. Does this duplicate buckets? <laughs> it's a bucket farm. I didn't know it did that. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not exactly what we're gonna use it for. I want to take a basic chemical tank, which, by the way, chemical tanks hold gases, so they can't go in the creative tank. But we can fly over to our old power setup, grab some uranium hexafl- uranium- can I please have some? All right, we're gauge dropping it. Uranium hexafluoride, please. Thank you. Now we can use a rotary condensator to turn it into liquid uranium hexafluoride, and if I'm not mistaken, put that into a tank, and this can go inside of the creative fluid tank for infinite fissile fuel. Pop that down here, right click it, and there it is! An infinite amount of uranium hexafluoride. Huge, absolutely huge. We can place the rotary condensator here and actually switch it around so that it turns the liquid into the gas. Have it push gases out to the side here so we turn it into fissile fuel. And we can use some ultimate mechanical pipes to move this liquid uranium hexafluoride into the condensator. We're also gonna wanna speed this guy up. All that's left to do is to set this to pull and yep, there it is. A completely infinite supply of fissile fuel. I just need to put a little bit more energy upgrades in the uh, centrifuge. Oh, there we go. It is now impossible for us to run out and that means that antimatter is infinitely automated in space. And I can truly say that I have beaten Create Mechanized. Because I'll level with you, I didn't need to do this to save Carl or get to Glacio, but knowing Carl's antics, I figure he'd appreciate an infinite supply of nuclear waste in order to power a new spaceship to take us to our next adventure. But I think it's about time I say goodbye to this world. Not that a tier 4 rocket is going to be easy to craft. So I should probably get started on that before I lose my mind about something else. Yep, that that's an absolutely enormous rocket craft we have to do. It's a good thing we had an antimatter pallet left because that's kind of the core of this whole thing. So I need 20 of this tier 4 plating. The rest of the things I pretty much have, tier 4 plating is going to require tier 3 plating, is going to require tier 2 plating, is going to require tier 1 plating, and that means we need steel, bronze, and shadow steel. And there's all the bronze we need. That's tier 1 plating off the list. Of course, tier 2 plating needs dash. Any leftover thermal tiles? Oh, you know it. Just need a few more, but that should not be bad since I've been running that silica farm for so long. We should have what we need. Oh yeah. New thermal tiles, baby! I'll actually need 40 of these because we need to make a bunch more of them for the higher tier platings and all that jazz. But somehow, I don't think that's actually going to be a problem. And we've already got it. That means we can upgrade our tier 1 plating into tier 2 plating once I remove this filter. Oh yeah. With some Ostrom sheets, we can go ahead and upgrade these to heat-resistant thermal tiles or something. Or reinforced, whatever it is. And now, with our new thermal tiles, Tier 2 plating and Ostrom blocks, we can make 20 Tier 3 platings, and we're almost there. The last step is surprisingly simple. We just need 20 blocks of Calorite, toss it right in, and Tier 4 plating is ours. Oh, beautiful. I can now fill in most of our missing spaces. So, we still have three plating left for the engines and one final guidance computer to make. And I hate the guidance computer, so I'm gonna make the engines first. Which are pretty expensive, but I saved some Stellarite clusters just for this. Three Stellarite clusters. Got the incomplete engines. Got the wiring. And all I have to do now for our final engines of the game is send them along their way. Calorite engines, absolutely beautiful. And now one last guidance computer. One last component, and we can save Carl and impress him with our ultimate creative tank. The entire deployer line is set up, so all we have to do is hope that this doesn't break while we're making it, because it's really annoying to make. Here we go. Yes, the final guidance mechanism, and that means the Tier 4 rocket capable of conquering the galaxy. 
Uh, what, what did I, what did I do? What did I do? I broke, I did it wrong. Is this just forever? Can I change it? Oh, eh. ah, why do I have to do this to myself every time? Okay, and hopefully no more screw ups, no more mess ups, rocket ship, tier four, come to me, baby. Yes, haha, <laughs> there it is. The unbeatable machine, the greatest rocket there is. It's time. The rocket is fueled. My spacesuit is ready. The last thing I need are my two gifts for Carl. We, of course, have the tasty dragon's egg, which somehow made it out of my house. I have no idea. And the secret to infinite fuel. Well, I'm all prepared. Let's conquer the galaxy. Oh, I'm a bit nervous, but, well, there's nothing to do but go. No need to bring a launch pad with me this time. I don't plan to return. Carl and I are going home. Or, well... Wherever the wind takes us, I suppose. And there it is, Proxima Centauri. Beyond our solar system, Glacio. We can finally land on Glacio. Oh, yes. Boy, that is an ominous looking moon sun thing. I th there is a sun, so I don't know what that is. Oh, wow. And this is a massive patch of powdered snow and I'm now freezing to death, okay. Um, let's get the rocket, get the rocket, come on. Out of the snow, please, let me out. Oh, this place is dangerous and cold and infinite. And if you've never played Ad Astra before, this is the end. This is it. The infinite snowy wasteland of Glacio stretches out in all directions with the great purple moon in the distance. The winds whip around you and even the daylight is filled with stars. And according to my coordinates, if I just head towards the sun as it sets, I should find Carl. I hope he's doing all right. I did kind of take my time to get here, but he's an adventurous duck, so I think he'll understand. I've been traveling so long, there are stars in the sky now. It's nighttime. I don't like there's no moon that rises or sets, but I should be, wait. Smoke! Smoke on the horizon, a smoke signal! Oh, that has to be Carl. There's nothing else in this place that produces fire. It is! The spaceship! Oh my gosh, all the way back from above and beyond. Carl! Buddy! Oh my gosh, I guess you've been keeping toasty with the crash light, huh? Oh, it's so good to see you! Oh my gosh, let me get you out of here, man. Let me put out all these fires. Woo! Don't worry, bud. I've got a nice spacesuit for you to warm you up. Oh, come here, Carl. Let's get you out of this spaceship, buddy. Ha <laughs> ha! Whoa! Yeah, best friends forever. You know it, buddy. Come on, Carl. Come on up here. There he is! It's the space tug rescued after all these months. Oh, I miss you, buddy. I got some presents for you. Got ourselves a little dragon egg snack if you'd like to have it. Here, I'll set that with you. And check this out. I took my time making this thing right here. We should have some infinite fuel supply for, uh, you know, repairing the rocket ship. Well, there you have it. That was Create Mechanized 1.5. A new 1.6 version is out, so your pack is probably a little different from mine at this point. And if you're interested in having Carl in your world, the mod should be publicly available when this video goes up or very soon after. It's made by Dakota Pride Modding, a huge friend of the channel and the developer of Garnish for the Create mod, if you like that one. But there'll be a link in the description when the goes live. You know, there's a little bit of time it takes to approve. But you too can have the space duck in your Minecraft adventure. Me and Carl have a spaceship to repair and new planets and new adventures to get through. So thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing, and liking and commenting all throughout the series. And I'll see you in the next one. We gotta get ourselves into the caves if we want to achieve true aerial mastery. The Jojo, I hope this message reaches you. I have found myself lost amongst the stars. Oh, there it is. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, baby. Because I'm DJ Jojo the Awesome and I've got the rocket. Tier four, come to me, baby. Yes, Carl, buddy.